HBC United, check in real quick. Hey, before you get ready to watch your favorite show here on the network, I need you to do me a humongous favor. Go to all of your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. Go to all of them. Make sure you subscribe to the channels. Make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. Take 30 seconds. Just press the follow button right there. Make sure you got your notifications up. Make sure you got everything rocking and rolling. And then make sure you are 100% logged into to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. That is the network home of all things HBC Nightly Network. Go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. And then go to HBC Nightly. Make sure you got the merch. Modern Revival merch is on there. Shipping is free, but we always tell you that. But go to all of your social media platforms. Go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join. Make sure you're a part of the community. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, everything, wherever you at. And then enjoy the show. I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to sit down and we'll enjoy the show. I'll see y'all on the other side of it. I love it. Tonight on HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Sepp Sr. It is tournament time. Things have gotten shaky already. And we're going to go into them as we get into the show. Also, I got a special announcement that we're going to make tonight live on the show. As we get toward the second half of the show, you guys stick with me. We're going to be talking about this special announcement as we go along. Also, man, we just going to have some fun tonight. It's me and y'all, man. Put your questions inside of there. Put your conversations inside of there, inside the chat. Make sure you guys are engaging. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Because HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Sim Singer starts right now. This is uh, Wednesday night. It is uh, 9.34 Eastern Standard Time. It is 8.34 Central Standard Time, 6.34 Pacific Standard Time. You could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to be here with me. What y'all think about the new intro music, man? Listen, this is HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Sim Senior. Checking in with you guys from my home studios here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, if you go to hbcunightly.com forward slash watch, you can check out the entire Season 2 catalog. Everything from the beginning of Season 2 to the end of Season 2. Every single show we have here on the network, all in chronological order by date. You go to hbcunightly.com forward slash shop. Put in the code HBCU. Receive an additional 15% off plus free shipping nationwide with the exclusion of two places, Alaska and Hawaii. Also, go to hbcunightly.com forward slash join to come join the fastest growing community in HBCU sports and entertainment. That's hbcunightly.com forward slash join. That's hbcunightly.com forward slash watch. And that's hbcunightly.com forward slash shop and have some fun. All right, listen, man, ladies and gentlemen, I got to make sure I open this up. We're a little bit tardy tonight as far as the open. Uh, today is my, my brand new baby, our baby girl, our one-year-old baby girl's birthday. So we wanted to have some festivities. Uh, we wanted to sing happy birthday to our beautiful daughter, uh, Jordan. We absolutely love you, sweetheart. Happy birthday, darling. Daddy loves you. I hope that you have enjoyed your first birthday here with mommy and daddy and your siblings and your grandmother and all of your family members. We all love you, but daddy loves you most. All right. So in the midst of that, in the midst of uh, of singing happy birthday and the birthday festivities for my beautiful daughter, um, we have had some interesting things occur today and this past week. Um, it's been an amazing seven days. Uh, it's been an amazing seven days since the last time I saw you guys here on HBC Unitedly. Um, there's been some incredible updates and changes that have happened um, inside of my life that uh, at a later date I will share. Uh, but I will say that it has been an incredible, incredible seven days since the last time I saw you. But I want to make sure I say a couple things because I did. I got it. I knew Jay White. Jay White, I was looking to try to tag you earlier today. I don't know what your name is on Twitter. On X, I'm sorry. Please make sure you put your name on Twitter, Jay White, because I want to make sure I shout you out, bro. Because you called it, and and low key, nobody else had that W happening. So please make sure you put that in there. Herb will be back on Sunday. I'm sure Herb probably is gonna try to show his face tonight. 
But Herb is uh will probably be back on Sunday for HBCU Hoops Weekly. Nonetheless, and shout out to Alabama and for that W today. But let's continue. As you guys have seen, the last two weeks we stayed steady with this. Let me set the record straight. All right, let me set the record straight. Jay White, please, man, seriously. Oh, shoot. Oh, you A&M homecoming. Oh, look, y'all don't even know. Erica's in the backstage. She making a face like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I was going to ask you today. I don't know if I can ask you now, dog. I don't know if I can ask you now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to you though, Jay White. That's crazy. Hey, I got I got to bring Erica face like a slug. She incredible face it is. E, did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Yeah, we definitely gonna make sure no. we follow you back, man. That's oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Oh man, I did not know that. That's who you were. Jay I literally White. was like, I haven't seen you since the twin faces. <laughs> You ain't been sure. Hey, why you ain't? Hey, why you ain't got your YouTube name is there? You should have your YouTube name is there, right? Like, yeah. I, but then again, I don't know which which platforms you guys are engaging from. So we we across many different platforms. But uh, that's crazy. I had to bring you up real quick so you can see you your face. Back. You can put me back, but we ain't them homecoming. <laughs> Look, you've been setting stuff on fire, a and Homecoming, since we really started as a platform, man, since we started as just a show that was doing Twitter Spaces, man, you've been setting stuff on fire, so now that we now can put a name with the face, that's crazy, that's why that's dope. All right, so listen, let me let me continue um, on, on my moment. Um, so listen, I did, I, I opened up by saying it's been an incredible seven days uh, here for myself as well as here at the network. Uh, we we have had an incredible run here. Um, um, some great partnerships that are going to be coming out that we're going to be announcing here very soon. Um, first off, um, the Mid East Athletic Conference uh, extends its contract in Norfolk, Virginia. We are absolutely going to talk about that tonight. We got to get into the minutia of that. Uh, you know, the, the MEAC tournament has begun. It has gotten started in Norfolk, Virginia. So we got to talk about that. Uh, our, our distant cousins. Um, and their tournament has begun, uh, one of which was uh, on the other side of it. Hey, listen, hey, Perry, we ain't worried about that. It's okay. All right, this is the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference tournament. It's supposed to happen like that. We, we, ain't nobody just going to let you just roll over, right? Like, you know, what Norfolk just did to Coppin State, that's the last That's the, the, the last rated team in the conference. They supposed to do that. Melanie Sashore sure ain't no pushovers, man. They ain't going to just let you just beat on them. And, and not try to fight back, but it's it's gonna be interesting, man. It's it's gonna be really, really interesting. Uh, but listen, man. Um, let me continue to on this series of setting the record straight. We have an opportunity right now. Um, you know, as we're getting ready to transition into March, it's March Madness from the basketball perspective. But for those of y'all who are not very familiar with what we do on HBC Nightly, here in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be doing our our season breakdowns. Uh, we're gonna be doing our predictions. And last year, it caused an uproar. People were feeling some type of way and feeling like we were hating on them and all of this. Listen, man, uh, I, I'm going to continue to keep making sure that it's noted that these perspectives, how we do it here at HBCU Nightly is we allow for everybody's individual perspectives to be able to kind of play here. So that way we don't have one overarching perspective that rest rules and abides over everything, right? That includes myself. Like, I, I'm just in the number. You know what I mean? I'm in the number of everybody else that votes here. Everybody has their own individual perspective, um, and we respect everybody's perspective. Uh, and these next couple of weeks, uh, when we get into these these count these schedule breakdowns, uh, some of y'all gonna feel some type of way. Let me go ahead and say it now. Some of y'all gonna feel some type of way, um, and it's not because of what which each individual. I hope that you you take your issue up with where you have maybe an individual person's uh, disagreement and not the collective. Because we allow for everybody to vote, right? We go game by game, just so we make sure. I'm making sure we're prefacing this now. We go game by game for every individual program in HBCU football. Mostly, we start on the on the major level. All right, we start and we finish on the major level. We go game by game across every single conference. And some of y'all last year when we said some things, y'all felt some type of way. I mean, it was some folks that literally, like, was adding at HBCU nightly. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Da -da 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 -da. Like, God, bro, it ain't even that serious, man. It really is a prognostication. 
sports shows and debate. I want people to remember what we said when we first started this show. Because all of you guys, we built together, right? I like to be honest. We have built together. You guys listening and watching every week is just as important as me coming on here every single week and providing you these prognostications, right? And providing you what my perspective is or Erica's perspective or BJ's perspective or Dave or Markham or Herb or, or Gerald or Tadia, like everybody, man. Um, and I hope I didn't miss anybody. But at the end of the day, like these particular perspectives, it, it, that's exactly what they are. They're the way too early predictions. But we got to talk ball, man. Listen, football in our in our world is now year round. I dreamed of the day that HBCU football was year round. It was a year round conversation. You think about how important it is. And me and my brother BJ Jones was talking about this the other day. That in the first two weeks of the season, you have quite literally two matchups that could be the, the, the early onset look of what the celebration bowl is going to look like. What does everybody else, what's everybody else's season going to look like? You got Norfolk State, who a lot of people believe. Now, I don't personally believe this, but you got Norfolk State, who a lot of people believe are the odds in favorite going into the football season this year because they got the quarterback that spent the most time. I'm of the opinion that the conference is going to be open. Spring ball is rocking and rolling. I'm getting reports from spring ball across the country. It is, it is intense right now. It is intense right now. So when we get to these predictions, ladies and gentlemen, when we get to these predictions, ladies and gentlemen, please, man, do not start feeling no type of way. Please do not start feeling no type of way. All jokes aside. And one particular, listen, man, one particular part of this conversation is going to say some things that you might not agree with as a fan of an individual program or a fan of an individual uh, football program. I just, you know what I mean? All jokes aside, I think that this is a great opportunity if everybody just comes to the table and has some conversations. Listen, and you're right, P. Dawson Odoms is, um, you know, he's North Carolina Central grad. Uh, I, <laughs> this would be the second time he might be considered a favorite. Last time when he had Pootie Carter, he went to bed. All right. Couldn't get it done with Pootie Carter. So we're going to see. All right. But I'm telling you now, there's a program in this conference that the last two seasons has finished in the top 25. You got the reigning defending conference champions. That'll be back next year. They're not going to just roll over. You got an upstar Morgan state program. That's got that defense that everybody likes to talk about. We don't know what that's going to look like on the offensive side of the ball, but they're not just going to roll over. And ladies and gentlemen, in case you have forgotten, South Carolina State is who they say they are. And I believe they back next year. I don't think they went nowhere last year. I think it was just, you know, transition year. Most times when you have it, this was always meant to be about barbershop talk. Honestly, at this point, it's just barbershop. It's what it's always been. We always wanted to have a conversation from a from a from this perspective. I'm going to do what I want to do. Troy, I don't know who you're talking to. I'm going to do what I want to do. I go to any and every single place being me. I don't change what I got to say for nobody. So I don't know what you think that is. I'm going to say what I need to say and say it when I want to. At every opportunity. Wrong person. I played this game and I don't forgot more football than 95% of people who watch these shows and talk football. I've forgotten more football. So I'm going to say what I want to say. Nonetheless, when we talking ball, I just don't want folks to be getting in their feelings, man. All right. Listen, I know everybody and their mama think they team going to go undefeated. Undefeated. I know everybody and their mama think they team going to go undefeated. It's not possible. It's not possible for everybody to go undefeated. Somebody got to finish in last. Somebody got to have one win. Somebody got to be a single win football program. <laughs> Somebody got to be in Hampton, Virginia. Somebody got to be Delaware. Somebody got to be, you know, Valley. Every somebody got to be, and everybody plays the fool sometime. So I'm prefacing the statement now. You know, I'm just saying it now. Yeah, Darren. You know, I had to throw that, had to sprinkle that in there now. Sorry, my bad brother. I got to sprinkle that in there. Somebody got to be a six to six conference champion to get to the celebration bowl and let us down. Somebody got to be. Somebody got. Y'all don't see my sister E. She is cracking me up in the backstage. But listen, man, 
it's going to be an incredible season, and we have to do our job here on the media side to build it up. The excitement, the pageantry. I don't want to talk about them other schools. I want to talk about us. I want to say, is what all corn going to look like next season? I mean, the early early conversations I'm hearing out of Alabama State is that Andrew Body looked like a a man child, and I, that's what I'm hearing. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing y'all too early. Y'all didn't throw fam. You under the bus. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing Big Bad Jackson State got something to say next season. That's what I'm hearing. A hey, visa. You know I had to sprinkle that in there, visa. I'm sorry. I'm I'm hearing Alabama A and M. This is a this is a, a a a ride or die season. Paul, this is a ride or die season for A and M. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing PV ain't got. Hey, listen. Hey, Mel. You know we gonna find out. We gonna find out sooner or later. It's okay. Y'all gonna come holler at the, come holler at the top dogs. We gonna get a chance to come holler at you. We gonna talk to you soon enough. Huh? Huh? What you say? Okay. All right. Um. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of great things, man. And as much as I joke on that program, I'm hearing that there's a lot of excitement at the school down the highway. I'm hearing there's a lot of excitement. I'm hearing Southern got the old coaches reunion inside of their building. Everybody that's been a former head coach in that conference, all the convened on, South, on Southern, and they all over there with Coach Graves, and they think they're going to go down and beat everybody. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing Grambling think Miles Crawley – with this new head coach and this new system, they going to take over the West. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing Texas Southern. I, well, I ain't, I ain't really heard nothing about Texas. I'm, I'm be honest, No disrespect. I ain't heard nothing yet, but I'm sure I'm going to hear some stuff. No disrespect. TSU. TXS, TXSU. Sorry. I'm hearing Tennessee State. I'm, you know, you know, all the reports that came out today that, that, that Eddie George just said, no, I ain't going to go be no running back coach at Ohio State. I don't want to go back to my alma mater. Man, this is the fun part of it right now. Because very, very soon, soon enough, y'all remember how fast the football season came to us last year? And we was having all these conversations and just like the like a blink of an eye, it was like the football season was here. And it was like, oh, God. It's going to happen the same way this year. And I personally believe that this football season is going to be just as exciting, if not more exciting than last season. Last season, we had a lot of stuff that was in the mix. You know, there was a lot of conversations in the mix. There was a lot of conversations in the mix. People wanted to see what HBCU football was going to look like post-prime. And we well post-prime now. He got a lot of stuff he got to go worry about. I promise you, HBCU media and, to and shows and all of you're going to hear less about him and you're going to hear more about the individual programs this season than even you heard last year. You didn't hear a lot about him last year. I'm hearing that football is going to be right. I'm hearing Delaware State ain't just going to let nobody just roll over. Listen, <laughs> hey, Daryl, <laughs> uh, y'all going to find out soon enough. <laughs> What y'all gonna find out soon enough? I'm told y'all, and when you get a chance, talk to be nice. Tell them I told them that y'all one recruiting class away. Y'all got one more recruiting class. Y'all need to get one more recruiting class. Hopefully, y'all don't get rid of coach before. It, you know, it's okay. Listen, we're gonna go to our first commercial break. I'll bring the rest of the crew up, man. Thank you guys for checking out HBC Nightly Live with Joshua Sims here. We'll be right back after this first commercial break. And when we get back, we're going to have some conversations about basketball, and then we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of football. We'll be right back after this first commercial break. This episode of HBCU Nightly Live is powered by the all-new, brand-new, brand-spanking-new HBCUNightly.com. If you go to HBCUNightly.com forward slash shop and put in the code HBCU, you'll receive an additional 15% off plus free shipping nationwide, excluding Alaska and Hawaii, of course. Go to HBCUNightly.com forward slash shop. Put in the code HBCU and receive an additional 15% off plus free shipping nationwide, excluding Alaska and Hawaii. Also, go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash watch and check out the entire video on demand catalog for all of season two's episodes. Player interviews, coaches interviews, all there, right at the fingertips. Also, go to HBCUnightly.com forward slash join to check out the entire community. Articles, editorials, one-on-one -on -one conversations, it allows for you to be able to do all of that. 100% free. Go to hbcunightly.com forward slash shop. Go to hbcunightly.com forward slash watch. And go to hbcunightly.com forward slash join and have some fun. Welcome back to HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Simpson. As you see, we got some of the crew up here. Mr. Herb Seward III from HBCU Hoops Weekly himself. 
We got our good brother David L. Rhodes, the third, fourth, and fifth. And uh, um, it's just me, bro. <laughs> it's just me, <laughs> bro. <laughs> it's David Rhodes of MD. And then y'all know I got my sister on here, my partner, partner here at HBCU Nightly Network, Erica Lee on here with us. Hey, man. Hi. Um, listen, man, we, we've had some uh, some interesting things happen today. Uh, her, in short order, all right, you got a little bit of time. I'm putting you on a 30-second clock to explain to us what happened today between A&M and Alcorn State. Uh, long story short, uh, Alcorn got the brake speed off of them in the second half. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, A&M was extremely solid in the second half of that game. I got the Alabama State game on in the background here following it. Um, yeah. yeah, when you shoot from three like that, like they did in the second half, man, they hard to beat. And yeah. um, that wasn't the, that hasn't that wasn't the Alcorn State uh, squad that we've been seeing in the last three or four weeks of the season. So uh, was particularly particularly in the second half, man. They, they were they were out of sorts. Um, and um, you know, shout out to A and M, man. They were solid on both ends of the floor. You know, um, conversely. Uh, on the MEAC side, uh, damn, Norfolk State uh, looking like they're making a statement, you know, Behold. to start out, you know. So I mean, I, I kind of felt, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of felt bad for cop and looking at that score, man. But I didn't. Mean, what was the score? I mean, they they uh, kept it, was it close cop. in the first half. They definitely did. Yeah, yeah, but it's like they just flipped the switch, you know, after that first half, man. It was, it was kind of ugly after that, but. Yeah, man. I mean, you you guys been checking the show, and I mean, dude, I'm I'm up to my eyeballs, uh, in eyeballs, eyeballs. Yo, hey, you, be careful, be careful. Go, I didn't, man. Sheesh, man. <laughs> See, they almost they almost got Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless almost well, almost Skip, went Skip, to Paul's man. Purgatory. Well, he yeah, almost went to Paul's Purgatory if it wasn't for a comma. Yeah, man. Um, I'll skip this. You know, between call. that and be uh, cancel territory soon, you know, D two, you know, the D two yeah, and the NAIA attorneys are are going to be underway in short order on Thursday and Friday. Ooh. Um, and Ooh. hold uh, up, yeah, man. And um, word, Perry. I, well, I said that. I, I said the. I said Bethune Cookman was a threat, man. I mean, they. You know, that wasn't no. That wasn't wasn't no. For sure, those guys P, have the P. You believe that for real? You believe got, that if uh if they get past Southern tomorrow, that they gonna be in the SWAC championship? They got the offensive firepower to get there. You know, um, they can score with just about anybody in the conference. Question is, is which defensive team shows up? You know, for that, them, that is a wild take. And what you know, that is a wild take. You know what side of the bracket they on? Look, man, we we say this every year when it comes to the SWAC tournament. We look at the bracket. We look at the top seeds. We've already got a two seed that's gone. All already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it clear. As long as Texas Southern is there, that's what. <laughs> well, it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. Well, like I said, tomorrow they got the primetime slot. Texas Southern and Jackson State. That's gonna be a heck of a game. So. Texas like said, Southern is such a tournament team. Every they year. are. Like, why, why yeah, am yeah. I wasting yeah. my time? To, 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 that's why I was quick on MD on Monday. It was like, you picking against Texas Southern guys? I'm, I'm not. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I'm, it's difficult to go. It's difficult to, to go against. And Texas then you taught Southern, me that man. Grambling's never been to the NCAA tournament, which is wild. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I you know I'm. Uh, I'm I know they. Of, I know they can, Perry. I know they can. Can. I know they can. I think everybody in the conference can be beat for real, for real. We just saw it today. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, yeah. Everybody in the conference can be beat for real, for real. I just first off, I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure that Bethune is going to be Southern. And mm -hmm. then if Bethune be Southern, and let's say for instance Grambling, because now like I, the whole darn tournament don't, bracket is don't shaking let Grambling, up now. Don't let Grambling don't lose, mess Alabama Alabama State. lose to Alabama State. Don't let that happen now. Well, I'm looking at, right I'm look, yeah, I'm looking at the score early. Um, the score right so, now. Grambling seventeen, Alabama State eight, and it looks like the, and it looks like the the offensive woes are back. It's early, you know. It's early. So. It's early. We'll see. Game, game of runs. It's early. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'll we just meanwhile we just knocked down another trade ball. Forty four fifty one Central is up right now over you, uh, Maryland Eastern Shore. 
Um, <laughs> but it was it was it was a uh, it was a couple other games today on the women's side. Uh, it, was, it was some games on the women's Ooh. side today. Uh, that was some that was some really Hi. good games. Go ahead. Hi, Morgan Academy. Hi. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick on Hampton. <laughs> I really, I thought you were going to pick on Hampton. I know. Yeah, Hampton. Hampton, I know Hampton coming. Though. No, but Hofstra, he, they beat Hofstra track during the season, and, and Hofstra just ran them out the, off yeah. the court in the Del- second half. Belt the tail. Belt the tail today. Bad, man. Yeah, Belt the tail today. I, I watched was, them. Bad. They were but the way that Hampton, too. the way that Hampton, both their men and their women went out, is it, it's, it's kind of Well, it's the kinda, women went out better when you sit down and think about it. I mean, at least they led. They led at the half. But the, men didn't lead at, the men didn't lead at all. They were down by almost 50 at one point. Hampton won one game, right? They beat Hampton men did win yeah, one they, game. Yeah, they them, the them, game. Them buses in East Greensboro they didn't even win one. I knew we were going to win one. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to win seven games. You're talking about I knew we were going to win it. I just wanted the boys to play hard. Let me and tell you, Howard, Howard did Hampton a favor. After we let them win in New Jersey, they got a couple more wins and a tournament win. Like we turned the season around. Then they fired. Then they fired their coach. Then they fired. Well, yeah. they already, and they already have a new coach. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, what's, what do you know about what Herb? What do you know about the uh, the new coach, man? Um, well, I'm Ivan Thomas is uh, pretty plugged in the DC metro area in terms of um, you know prep and AAU ball. Um, he's been on that staff at Georgetown through a couple of ten years. Um, you know. I, you know, I raised the eyebrow when I saw the news of the potential hire because that's the type of cat that you want, you know, to be able to head your program if you're doing a rebuild. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I said, his ties in terms of recruiting are going to be big when it comes there. Um, <laughs> boy, po' boy king, that boy, po' boy, starting to heat up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's that you said his name with a straight face. Yeah, oh, poor boy. Poor, poor, you ain't saying his middle name. I got mad. Oh poor yeah, poor boy, boy is, is a, a is a king. <laughs> Who boy? Nine months, uh, and that's what they roll with. But yeah, that's incredible. I mean, but yeah, as far as the you that's know, as far incredible. as like potential hire goes, I think. Yeah, y'all, y'all do. Yeah, y'all do. Be by Cole. Yeah, y'all do. It's, yeah, uh, y'all, <laughs> y'all yeah. need to make that call today. Yeah, I think that's a good start. We were talking about this the other night, man, and um, I think uh, you know, me, <laughs> you know, me and a, a couple of buddies of mine were talking about this, and I, you know, I think this had more to do with the fact that uh, there are some pressures on Hampton being where they're where they are, mm-hmm. and you know, the alumni and other <laughs> voices are starting to you know are are really putting pressure on that for that to happen. So, uh, I mean, no, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, so, yeah, we do, Perry. Yes, we do. No, Perry. we don't, Perry. Perry. No, Perry. we don't, Perry. Perry. No, we Just don't. Just because you guys don't want to go watch, Perry. it's fine. No, we don't. It's fine. Perry, no, we don't. We watch. don't care, Perry. Perry, we don't care. We know you don't care. We know you don't care. We know we don't care. Perry, we don't care. None of us cares. I mean, we know why you know you don't care. Perry, Perry, we don't care, Perry. Perry, we really don't care. I mean, the only thing that the only thing the only other thing I can say about that hire is that. Um, if they let that guy put the staff around him that he wants, um, Hampton's going to be really, you know, that that'll be a good that'll be a good look. Daryl, no, he was on, he was on Ed Cooley's yeah, staff when he was in PC and when he went to Georgetown. Yeah. So I think okay. I think it's a phenomenal exactly. hire. It's a heck of a how long has he how long has he been exactly how long has he been at Georgetown? One well, year can, because Ed Cooley just got there. He came with Ed Cooley. With Ed Cooley. He was with Ed Cooley. He was a, so he's only been there a year, right? Yeah. Right. And, and, but he Cooley was just got coach. there when Patrick Union got fired. Yeah. yeah. But before okay. that, he was with Pete. He was on the staff for Providence College when Ed Cooley was okay. the coach from 2016. Yeah. And essentially, he, you know, like I said, his recruiting ties, not just in that area, but in, you know, in the Northeast. Um, yeah. You know, he was responsible for some pretty dope recruiting classes for, for Providence. Yeah. While he was there. Hampton so, must have thrown the bag at him. For they had to. Now. To get him? Yeah. They had to. I told, I, yeah. told, I told folks, man, that Hampton ain't. Listen, Hampton, Hampton ain't, ain't bro. hurting, bro. They ain't not, not hurting, bro. They yeah. not hurting, bro. But that, I talked about it on Monday. That, this is a sign that they're actually being serious about this. That was a phenomenal hire. I don't yeah. think Hampton has ever been unserious about athletics. They've been unserious. So they've been unserious since they transitioned from the MEAC to the Big South. They've been very unserious. Not about not about basketball, but about football. But because football takes 
football takes a lot more to get serious from yeah. than basketball. But Hampton's a basketball school. Like exactly. Hampton, yeah, Hampton's a basketball. But, but the thing is, the basketball a football program, school. Huh? Well, I, 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 yeah, I can see in the nineties they definitely were a football school. Yeah. I don't. I think people really underestimate the impact of ODU and Christopher Newport getting football programs. In, this, in the Commonwealth of Virginia and how that had a di proportionate direct impact on Hampton's football program. You said Christopher Those, Newport? Christopher yeah, Newport Newport yeah. Okay, ODU. When, okay. when those two schools got football programs, Hampton's program precipitously declined. It was like, it was, it was almost immediate because now, especially ODU. Yeah, that the, was ODU in particular. In the area could stay and play at ODU instead of playing at Hampton. And ODU was getting those, you know, second and, and third string transfers from Virginia Tech and UVA. So yeah. as soon as ODU got a team, the Hampton's best football days were behind them. But Hampton was always good, especially in the 90s. Hampton was always good across both sports. They were always good at being able to recruit the 757. Yeah, and that's so when you add when you add another mouth, yeah, you add another mouth into that market. It, it's very very similar to what happened here in North Carolina when UNC Charlotte started their football program. A lot of the guys that that were like friends, that were friends, Chapel Hill, NC State guys, that was like, you know, I can go to NC State or I can go to Chapel Hill and I can sit on the bench for a year or two, or I can go to North Carolina Central, I can go to the school down the highway, or I can go to Winston State. And I can have an opportunity to come and compete my freshman year. A lot of those guys said, well, we now got a middle ground. We got a G5 middle ground now that's like, I'd rather go take my chances there. And at least I know I'll be playing FBS football, which is one of the reasons why I've always said that, especially the two of the big three inside of the state of North Carolina, should have already been considering going to FBS. And now the pathways would be different because the institutions are different. But both of those programs should be doing the same thing. Same thing applies as it pertains to Hampton. But now I think Hampton's performance has been so bad that it affects their trajectory to being able for, for them to be able to make it make sense to their stakeholders. Because though performance, though athletic performance is not a requirement to go to FBS, I think that your stakeholders who are going to be funding this are going to want to know that you're going to go and you're not going to become the doormat of FBS. Right. And and I think that does a, 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 a prohibitive disservice to everybody if they go up there or anybody of any of these programs go up there and they don't do this right. Because football is the big dog, which is for me, I mean, I'm going to be honest, you know, right now, like when it came to light that. OK, I don't even I don't even want to say that. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I ain't going to say that. Well, but I'll just, I, I I'll know just I know of two programs that have declined. I know two HBCU programs that have declined an FBS invitation. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to add something um, to this hire. Um, Hampton, and I, and I said this on, on the show the other night, um, there's no reason for Hampton not to be recruiting in that area the way they have over the years in basketball. For sure. There's absolutely no reason for it. And not, we're not just talking about the the seven five seven, which, ironically, again, you've got one of the biggest AAU names, you know, on the East Coast in Boo Williams, that's right in your backyard in Hampton. Um, that's one of the reasons why this hire is really uh, an interesting one because this guy is plugged in. He's he is plugged in, in into those circles. But and, Herb, I'll say this, Herb. There is a going to Hampton is a thing, right? You gotta want to go there. So even uh, if he tries to recruit, <laughs> you gotta want to go. There. I get that. I, I get that. Look, but, look, I, but I'm. And, but I'm and, and you and you you not only do you have to want to go there. First of all, you gotta get in, and then you gotta go see, and then you gonna say, you gotta say to yourself, like I got in, but like is this really where I want to go? Like. Well, well, that's what I mean. By eleven every night. Like, well, I mean, what you want to do? Ten to eleven. Look, man, it's, it's, it's ten. The way the way I see that, man, it's no different than anybody that's recruiting at say BYU or any other or school Liberty. that ha or Liberty or anybody any place else. The bottom line is that if you if you got a coach that can recruit, 
they're going to get players there regardless of I mean, what. If you look at the, the SEC, yeah, look at some of them towns there. in the SEC, that's, bro. Like, would you want to live in Tuscaloosa? Would you want to live in in uh, what's the name? Uh, the, the, the city of Mississippi, yeah, Mississippi State. At? Yeah, you want to live yeah, in the, them joints. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the difference is in those towns. Starkville. The instant Starkville. The yeah, difference Starkville. is in those towns. That sounds like in those place towns. I need to be. <laughs> but the difference is in those towns. Those institutions are the town. Like everything in those towns and those cities surround around that institution. That is not necessarily the case in Hampton, Virginia, bro. Uh, like it's like the, it's like it's like month. the city. It's <laughs> like the city of Hampton and like Hampton Tour University. Next month. Right Hampton in that University the peninsula going into the water. It well, really is like its Norfolk own State place. Party and get back well, um, let me put this. Let me put this in the. Uh, and to your point about and, and to your point, Herb, about BYU and Liberty, they face the same thing. It's one of the reasons why those programs, as it pertains to basketball and even football, for that for that matter, they're not consistently top notch programs as uh, on, on, and they're in their level. Dog, Liberty. I mean, listen, how many Liberty NCAA, just, when, Liberty just got an MPS though? And that's been there ten years. I'm just yeah, saying. Liberty, I'm just. I'm just saying. They're not. They are not a. They're not a program. When you think about. When you think about FBS football, Liberty is not a program minus the last couple of years with um it's my guy that's down at uh that's down at Auburn now. Uh, Hugh Freeze. Minus Hugh Freeze, minus Hugh Freeze them years. You're not looking at Liberty as this dominant G5 program. They are middle of the road G5 program that every once in a while they have a really good season that puts people on notice. In basketball, the same thing. And I know this because Central played against Liberty last basketball season. And they had that kid who was like, who finished top 10 or something like that and all time scoring or something. Like, that's rare. They ain't going to never get in a. I mean, I, I don't want to say like only that. basketball NCAA well, tournament went me, Liberty. Well, let me put this. You know well, let me put this another way. BYU the same way. Okay. I, I will when say, I look at, we need to talk about I, the women's coach and if, when Hampton's going to let um, Coach Six go. Because I, I don't yeah, know. I think, look, I think that might have been his last game today. Yeah, let me put this another way. And I'm I'm speaking strictly, you know, from a basketball perspective. Um, I look at Hampton, and I yeah, I mean the con, you know, the concerns about whether or not folks want to go to Hampton or not is are con, you know, it, that's legit. That's you know, that's a legit concern. At the same time, you know, I'm a basketball head that's looking at Hampton, and looking at where they are, not just in the seven five seven, but anybody that's familiar with the state of Virginia knows that there's a lot of basketball and really good basketball being played. Eastern Virginia, um, go, you know, going up the peninsula toward Richmond and down into Southern Virginia. Um, there's a lot of people being, you know, ODU has made a living in that area in terms of recruiting. Now, again, I really, when I look at this higher, I look at the fact that you know, there are all sorts of kids that, you know, throughout that region. And I'm, like I said, I'm pretty familiar with the region. You're talking about the corridor between Richmond and Petersburg to the Carolina border. There is a lot of really good talent down there. We're not even talking about, you know, schools like Brunswick and Dinwiddie that are, you know, repeat national, you know, uh, state champs, sometimes borderline, um, you know, being nationally considered. Um you know, Brian Stith is coaching program AAU programs out of that area. Um, there's a lot to consider, and I think it's a, it's going to be a really interesting thing seeing him, seeing this guy uh, take the mantle of this program, and seeing who Hampton gives the resources to for him to hire. I think that's going to be the key. Um, but yeah, I think those are you know I think you guys are absolutely right in in what in a lot in a lot of respects because. That is a challenge, and that is something I mean, that um, they, you got to really worry, got to really Ham look at. Hampton has a new president. They have a new AD. They clean the house, guys. They want to compete. If they're not Listen, using it, they, I, look. Believe it, or not, believe it or not. Prideful. Their alumni are very prideful. They are not. You, and I, listen, they're my not, brother is a Hampton alumni. They are not used to losing. It's not in their DNA. They're gonna. They don't gonna, like. They don't like about to drop that bag, man. They're finally ready to look because they listen. Like we're just talking about the revenue sports. Let me keep it a buck with you guys. There's some sports they haven't won a conference game in yet, multiple since they've been yeah, in but, the conference. Yeah, but listen, outside um, of y'all right now, outside of y'all right now, like it's not that we're not paying those non-revenue sports any attention. It's just there's a pie, 
right? And like 80% of the attention is on the revenue sports because those are the things that provide return on investment. 20% of the attention is split amongst all of the non-revenue sports. And so for us, right, I think that we end up missing an opportunity. Hampton's situation is unique across the entire HBCU diaspora, right? Like not only are they a private school, but they're Hampton. Like it's it there's private and then there's and then there's Hampton private. Yeah. Right. There ain't there's, too many schools. Private, in the North, there's ain't too many schools that a random person in the Northeast can can name. Hampton's one of them. It's private, and you know what I'm saying. Let's just keep it real. So for them, being bad, and I'm, I'm talking about like being really bad in basketball, but being pretty bad in football too, is not something that it's not something that their base is ever going to just be okay it's a with, non-starter it's it is a non-starter non i've seen people get fired for less from hampton than this mess so i'm not surprised Jordan, they got joined up out of there i won't be surprised they get the women's coach up out of there I, I think if the contract's up he ain't coaching a game there ever again the athlete i don't think it even matters if the contract is up i think this athletic director sees an opportunity somebody to clean gave house me, somebody loves gave me the inkling that they don't want to spend the money to buy out the contract I'm almost positive if Prunty don't come out next year and win a po a, a positive ga a number of games next year. I well, won't I mean, be surprised if we see year. Prunty. You won five this year. Did all right this year. What's, I mean, compared over, to years what's, before. What's your overall record if you win five wins? He's five and six. Under 500. One game under 500. How much longer do you think this Hampton, this Hampton base is going to continue to keep being okay with being under 500? I think they will panic if they start losing the HBCUs. They they still be they still winning those games, so they're like probably like all right. But the Are thing they? is, they got a yeah. They they went. I think the only team, the only HBCU they lost to last year was Norfolk. They beat Hampton. They beat Grambling in football. They beat Hampton to beat Grambling, right? They beat Hampton to beat Grambling. They beat A and T. Still mad about that game. I, I think I think they um that Grambling win may have definitely saved uh, may have definitely saved Prunty a little bit. I think folks um, thought that Prunty was out of here. Like, but I they ain't they they. You know that that win against Howard and they because, beat it's rivalry, because it's a rivalry game. Um, that win against Howard because it's a rivalry game. It it always has a a little bit extra, not a little bit. It has a little. It has more impact and power to whether a person that stays. That saves or not. him. That, that saves him. Oh, beating yeah, beating beating, beating games games they, like that saves you. The way that they came back, that saved them. Saved yeah. to me like. But let me the tell way you something. That we lost, you, I know, look, but it's been a while since y'all beat them in football. But let me tell y'all something. They got five. They got five HBCUs on the schedule next year. Yeah. I wonder what. I wonder how that's gonna turn out. They open up against against Morgan State in that's New gonna Jersey. Be a good game. I, I might have to take a ride up there to go down. That's gonna be a good game. That's gonna be a good game. I'm gonna tell you also. That's a that's a make or break game on both sides for both coaches. I don't. I, mean, I don't. Nah, know, I don't know. I don't think the Morgan coach got nothing to worry this is, about. This is my opinion. Hey, Mike, please stop saying stupid stuff like that. We already went through this. You cannot call a program, a conference, a mid, a, a high mid level mid major if they haven't won a game as a conference in the NCAA tournament. What are you talking about? That's just you loving them, people, bro. You just love them. I mean, say it's that a, it's a competitive conference. It's, it's a competitive. It's a every competitive conference, conference. Every conference is competitive in basketball, but if the conference itself has not won or produced anything, how do we get to start calling program a conference a high mid major? The West Coast Conference, because they have Gonzaga, is considered a high mid major. I and I don't like, think they I, I like because the they just got like, Gonzaga. <laughs> they got Gonzaga and St. Mary's, and that's it. Okay, most programs, most conferences that we talk about being high mid major. They really got one to two teams in their conference. Most Agreed. of them do. I we, they mostly have one to two. They don't have five, six teams in a conference that's going to go crazy. They got one to two programs yeah. in their conference that will go out and be competitive. Gonzaga being in the West Coast Conference makes that conference a high mid-major conference. Now, if we start saying that the CAA is a high mid-major conference, and then I go say, okay, well, then show me where the CAA has won, when's the last time the CAA won an NCAA tournament but, game? But here's the thing, Josh. You got to look at it from a different perspective, right? There's 32 conferences. There's 32 conferences in, in Division One. Okay. Where 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 does the CAA rank? We know they don't rank higher than, than the West Coast Conference. We know they're not going to rank higher than the Power Five in the Big East. The I don't know. Like, I mean, they're in the same I mean, predicament. They're, they're in the same the predicament, the the same golf, predicament the as the Golf Coast me. Conferences. Whoever from the Golf Coast. The Florida Gulf Coast teams that was winning tournament games. Hampton won. Hampton, won. Hampton beat those guys this year. <laughs> Hampton beat them this year. I don't, man. I don't care what you do during the season. 
What matters, what matters and what you are, what you are judged on is what you do in the postseason. It's what you do. It's what you do in the postseason. And if you got a team, if you got a team, I listened to y'all the other day and y'all told me about college of Charleston, right? And I went and I left and I went to go do some homework, right? And I said, okay, well, if College of Charleston is the best program in the CAA consistency wise, they're the most best Between program. Them and, and they and, and they Those just the and they just got done with UNC. I give you UNCW during the Keats years, right? I give you UNCW during the Kevin Keats years. <laughs> yeah. That I think that's what ended up getting them the job at NC State, which he's getting ready to be relieved of that duty, probably strictly. But <laughs> already, he just got the damn job. He just got what job? Then he just didn't he just get hired like a few years ago? Dog, Keith's been there for six or seven oh, seasons. Oh, it's been—I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, he's been he's been there about six or seven seasons. Jeez, but please, man. at the end of the day, <laughs> it, at the end of the day, you have individual programs that you would consider to be high-level mid-major programs, not conferences. No, that is where I would like for us to start to move this conversation because you got people like Mike who just won't come out and be honest and say he wants his program to go to another conference. And that would help us to be able to settle, not even having had these conversations with him. They would, I think he would be better off. We all would be better off if he just came out and said that. Not coming out and saying, oh, we love what everybody else does over there. We hate what we do over here. I hate what we do over here. So I'm going to give them all of the positive tropes. I'm going to give the black conferences all the negative tropes. And then I'm going to just come out here and just say stuff off the hip. That don't make no sense. But that further helps me to understand he ain't played not a single sport in any of our lifetimes, let alone maybe in his. When you start saying stuff like, so why, Josh? Why is Hampton and A&T not competitive, but they will be competitive in the Swack and MEAC, and you know it? How the freak do I know that? Oh, they were probably. No, Hampton no, no, no. Wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. I how would I, how, do I, how do I know how do I know that Hampton would be successful in the MEAC? If Hampton was playing basketball in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference right now, they're not beating Norfolk. They're not beating Central. They went one and one against Howard. Howard is the fourth has the fourth seed in the conference this year. They were the third best team in the conference. They went one and one. They split with Howard and had to come back down double digits against Howard at a neutral site. Why are we making these concussions on the bench? Like, so why are we making yeah. these sweeping generalized statements instead of being able to say, well, what would your program do in these conferences? Because that's what real that's really what the barometer is. The barometer is not the barometer is Can not an HBCU D1 team win a conference championship in the PWR conference. Freak, yes. If if North Carolina Central was in this in the CAA last year, they would have won the conference. Yeah, this, this is not getting it. This not went, hey, yo, yo, no, yo, 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 can we, hold on. Let me, let me we say this, three, man. No, stop, hold on, wait. We went three and one against y'all PZ Conference last year. We yeah, won, me, where we've gone in the last That means you wouldn't have won the conference. That let means me, you wouldn't have won the conference. Let who me won just, the conference last Who won the conference last year? a lot of hypotheticals. It was like, yeah, right, it was a whole bunch of hypotheticals. Who won the conference last year? It was a two-way tie, I think, right? It was Albany. It was Albany. Let me, let me do Hold on, hold on, hold on, I want to hear this. Between who? It was Albany, Richmond, and it was somebody else. I think. Let me check. It was a. It was co champs. It was three co champs. I remember correctly. And that's not hearsay from my perspective. That's go. We line it up. We play in off. We play in off conference. We play out of conference against them. That's not hearsay from my perspective. That's me saying two of their teams that they played that's been ranked in their conference. We beaten them Mo multiple times at this point. It was. This is not Albany, a. It's not hearsay. At this Albany, point. Richmond, and Villanova were co champs. They were all, all three of them went seven and one. I mean, it's a big Albany conference. and Richmond went seven and one. So how would us Albany, going Richmond, three? And, and Villanova went seven and one? All of them had one loss, right? They all had one loss. So one loss wouldn't win that conference. If, if one loss, you got everybody, dude. You got to play eight games, man. And you, no, you, we're not in your conference. You talking hypothetical? We beat. You are we too. beat. <laughs> okay, listen. We you lost, lost one. one of them. We you lost, lost to one. Richmond. We, exactly. Lost we lost. One. Yeah. We lost to Richmond. Yeah, we lost to Richmond, but we beat played, everybody else. And we who, didn't lose, you, but listen, we didn't lose to us who, who listen, won one game. We didn't, you lost we didn't to lose. Elon. We didn't lose. We didn't lose. So y'all beat y'all beat us. You we beat, beat you. We beat Elon. We beat Campbell. All those guys in the bottom half of the conference. Elon was a top twenty-five team when we beat them, but they ended up at the bottom of the conference. It doesn't. You guys were point. at the no. You guys were at the bottom of the no, conference. I said Elon was in, they were in the bottom no, half. Is my point. Elon was in the no. Elon was in Elon was in the middle. You guys on, making these, nah, making these, check. Nah, I gotta check. making these, making these 
unrealistic think, hypotheticals like this. I think yeah. Howard, when you North play State them, and Central would have done quite well in the CAA last year. Come on, man. Seriously? Like, like, seriously? What about and the question Campbell, comes about Cam, the Campbell the question had a comes record. about Campbell had a losing record? Okay, Elon was fifth. Elon was fifth in the conference. No, I, it don't even matter where Elon finished. And then you guys were abysmal. Oh, That's not were, our that was not yeah, our we were, fault. We were 13th. That 15th. was not our fault. You guys had half 15th. of your conference. The team that won the conference at a share win of the conference lost to Morgan State. Who finished third in our conference? Lost to Hampton. Let me team. let me just say this: Richmond's man. only loss in the conference was before, Hampton. Crazy before enough. we go down the rabbit hole on on okay. who's better, I don't uh, think this. I, I mean, don't think this is a rabbit hole. I think this is a great conversation to have from a sports perspective. When you line it up, it, this takes all the hypothetical out of it. When you line it up, when you line it up. Not only were they a not Rhode Island, we beat uh, New Hampshire the year before. We yeah, beat New Hampshire the year before. They were ranked at the time. That was we a good, beat that was Elon a good last year, and they were ranked at the time. This is this is when you line it up from a consistency standpoint. We don't have a problem with CAA teams. We lost to Richmond in the playoffs in a in a at their place. It is what it is. It is what it is. Don't nobody know the truth. Hush, Mike. You don't even know the truth. Don't I know what you're talking about? You just be talking. <laughs> Go ahead, Herb. You just be talking. <laughs> I'm not you respect. I would say Hush. this, man, from from a basketball perspective, outside from outside of the top, very top of the conference, uh, because Charleston's is a legit. The, those guys are a legit program. Um, there's not what much. Ma what makes them? What makes them legit? Well, first, you know, just the type of system that they run. Um, I mean, what they do to opponents. I mean, consistently, those guys are. You know, at the top of their league in terms of offensive efficiency, they shoot the ball extremely well. There's a reason why that program has been, you know, top 25 material for like the last three or four years since that staff has been there. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but her, yeah, but her. But let me, I ask, let me, I'm asking, I asked, I asked, what makes them legit? And what makes you legit as a mid major program is when you get to places where you can be able to prove yourself against other programs that play on this level. What do you do? They win and games. College, college of Charleston has not won an NCAA tournament game since 1997, was it, Dave? Let me, yeah, but they lost to the guys that went to the finals. Dog, I'm not no, even talking about just no, last no, year. Let me, let no, me no, 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 no. I'm not talking about just last year. If you haven't won an NCAA tournament game since 1997, how does that make you a legit program? There's some programs they never won one period. So well, let me, we, let, so well, let me how just, we calling them legit programs. Let me just put it like this, man. I look at who they've beaten, you know, and granted, yeah, if you don't win, you know, winning on the NCAA, you know, during the NCAA tournament, you know, on that big of a stage um, is going to be a feather in anybody's cap. You know, at the same time, nobody's talking about St. Peter's as being a legit program. Those guys had a sweet 16 run the other, the other why, year. Who, why aren't they talking about St. Peter's being a legit program? Because they don't. When you say, and when you say nobody, who are you talking about? I'm talking about in basketball circles in general. You know, well, you my talk, question, you, and so my question when is why? Talk, when you talk about mid-major programs, there are certain mid-major programs whose consistency, not just in the tournament, but in terms of regular season consistency against teams, against OOC competition, um, whether they are mid major comparable mid major competition or G five or Power Five conferences that have a certain reputation. I don't know what Mike you know talking about? He Mike, don't even pay that no attention. I don't know what he talking about. Yeah, I'm not worried about Mike. I don't this know is, what he talking this, about. This is get your, coach this is, get your bro, coaching together, bro. Our coaches do. <laughs> this is the best coaching job Kenny Blakeney's ever done. <laughs> what is let me 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 hey Herb, you gonna have to go you gonna have to just talk because we're gonna see these comments yeah. and we're gonna respond. You well, have to no, go. no, I'm, no, I'm gonna respond to that because I think that's really asinine. Um honestly. I think it's um you look at the MEAC, and I've said this before, the MEAC has one of the better core coaches in all of mid major basketball. Period. You're not going to find many mid-major conferences that have the likes of Lavelle Moton, Kenny Blakeney, Robert Jones. Um, I mean, you got Jason Crofton at UMES that 
that dude's one recruiting cycle away from that program really, really taking off. Um, you've got talented coaches in the conference, man. I don't, I don't buy the idea of, of people talk, you know, just crapping on co coaches like that. Man, you got to yeah. understand who we talking about, man. We talking, these are comments from a person who I don't think any of us at this point believes know anything about these sports that we, these sports we talking about. Maybe if we get on here and start talking about beach volleyball, Maybe he can provide us some sort of. Y'all got a beach volleyball team? I don't know. I don't know if anybody has any beach beach volleyball uh, teams. I know the Mister Talking about it, but I know some. I know. I know some of them do. Right? Shout out to beach volleyball. I ain't. I'm not knocking beach volleyball, bro. You can't talk about football, bro. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about football wise. You talking about programs? You talking about programs? Uh, North Carolina Central. Is a, you talking about North Carolina Central is a program that's finished in the top twenty five the last two years. Dog what, dog, what are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? This is stuff that you guys are, are acquiescing to become to. How has been to a celebration bowl? These are things that you guys are hoping and praying that you can put your program in a position to do. Since 2014, we've heard consistently from you guys that we are this type of program. No disrespect, because I got a lot of love for that defensive coaching staff that's at Morgan State. I think that they are an incredible coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball. But since 2014, the thing that we've heard consistently from y'all fan base is a whole bunch of knocking down of programs that have win, that win, and then that y'all are a program that is of some sort of substance. At what point do we say, when are you going to show us? When are you going to show us? At what point do we stop talking about what your football program can do and, that, and all of the aspirations that you guys have as it pertains to where you want to go and what you can do. Because you got one of the best coaches in the country. You got one of the best coaches in the country. Damon Wilson is a flat-out dog, and he can coach his butt off. He develops young men in a way that we don't see a lot of coaches across the country be able to do. But at a certain point, the rubber got to meet the road. In this game that I know, that I love, the rubber meets the road. Last year, we ragged on Howard. And what did they do? They responded by getting to a celebration bowl. That's what it boiled down to, Miss Karen. Put up a shut up. South, we, don't, we don't have the level of respect and admiration for South Carolina State just for no reason. It's not, it just doesn't exist just, just cause. It's because they got coaches that stay there for a long time. As much as I hate that school down the highway, we don't, we're not constantly having to have conversations about the run they went on when they was in the in a better conference. We don't consistently talk about I had to sprinkle that in there. I'm just saying I know you I'm did. giving you I'm giving you a compliment. I ain't I'm, I'm giving you a compliment. Oh, this guy, man. I'm giving you a compliment, Dave. Oh, Lord, mercy. I'm giving you a compliment. We don't consistently have to hear Troy and Dave and then entire school down the highway contingency talk about the run that they went on just because we wanted to consistently keep talking about them because they was the, they're the biggest ABCU. That don't mean nothing. Are we the biggest? I'm, it's that, not bad. No, no, it's that. not bad. I'm talking about from a football perspective. It means nothing. Having more students means nothing from a football perspective. You don't think it helped recruitment? You guys had the most. You won one football game last year. You had the most last year. Hey, shh. I'm just bringing up old stuff. You asked me a question. <laughs> I just. <laughs> you just answered it. E, you see how I try? E, you see how I try to get them a compliment? E, you see how they do? <sighs> Daryl Dar in the comments saying it was a backhanded compliment. Dave You're don't welcome. even want to take the compliment. I'm like, no, what, what more can I do? I don't even like to say y'all name. I'm trying to September show y'all. September 21st. September 21st. It's going three in a row. Three September in a row. 21st. Look at Troy talking about you rang. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my hate, outside brother, I, I, man. I hate y'all so that's much, a, That's the council that's OG, it. man. Don't y'all ask me why I hate them so much now. Y'all see, but I man, tried to give them a compliment. Man. 1990 AT Central. <laughs> man, we beat the, we beat we the, the Malas in the palace. Listen, the stuff the stuff they didn't show on the screen. No, I heard you're some OGs. I heard from some OGs. The stuff that they didn't show on the screen was the Dog. stuff that y'all didn't want them to see. Y'all ain't want them to see us. Let me hear like, Listen, this. Good Morning look, America. Look. Saw, look, man, they was like, yeah, it was on Good, good Morning America. America ain't gonna show. Good, good, good Morning America, America ain't gonna show. They not gonna <laughs> show black <laughs> people. They not gonna show y'all getting yoked up like this. I They're remember not when I was that. a student, somebody told me the story of it. It was just a story. And so this is what makes it great. You could back then you could just tell stories. You believe Zachary. 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 Flag on the play. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> Zach is reckless. Hey, they tried it too, Zach. 
you remember like at some point like in the middle of the season they were holding like tryouts remember i don't know if y'all remember that but i got the, i got the uh i got the print out the uh the joint that came out no herb don't stop trying to bring people in on your foolishness bro you're not about to throw my brother herb into that foolishness you talking about what are you talking about pink slip bro we all grown men what you talking about we all grown men and women on here bro ain't nobody doing no stupid stuff like that hush you want somebody to tag in with you you know ask dave to jump in on with you on your foolishness now you think herb is co-signing your foolishness because it's foolishness nobody believes what you're saying it doesn't make any sense none whatsoever <laughs> Let me just say this, man. Um, from a coaching standpoint and from a talent standpoint, the difference between the CAA, and I'm talking about basketball, the difference between CAA and MEAC is negligible. Negligible. Meaning that there isn't much difference. You drop, you, you drop the Norfolk State in the CAA, they're going to compete. No, no, I, I know State, dog. Norfolk, Norfolk State. You drop, top, you drop, I mean, you, Norfolk State you drop, is drop, finishes top two or three in that conference. Yeah, you oh, drop a North Carolina Central. You drop, you drop a North Carolina Central in that conference. They're going to compete. I put I Howard in that conference. Let's, let's you put Howard with, 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 with legit point guard play. They'll compete. I think. <laughs> I think these are all scenarios. Sorry, sorry, sorry Erica. It's, my it's, bad. It's, it's, all, it's all scenario. It's all scenarios, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But silly. Yeah. And I mean, look, I don't. I don't like dealing with scenarios. You know, so, you, what kind I mean, of question is this? Yeah, that I mean, you think North Carolina the, the, easiest an, the easiest answer that the easiest you know, proof that you can get. I mean, heck, just ask what Norfolk State was doing the CAA competition. You know, they had a losing um, record this year. Let, let me be clear. I mean, I'm just talking about over the last, last really three well. or four seasons. Yeah, last year they did really well. The last three or four seasons, they've been beating the brakes off of CAA competition in the in the conference. That they ain't the only one. They ain't the only they, one. Yeah, that includes George. That includes James Madison when they were in the CAA. That includes, um, heck, I mean, William and Mary don't even like playing Norfolk anymore. It's about a Norfolk squad that that beat VCU. That beat VCU yeah. this year at VCU. At VCU, come on, man. What are we talking about? We yeah, talking about a Howard. We talking about a Howard schedule. squad that's one possession away from beating Georgia Tech. This year. Like, what are we talking about? Just because y'all yeah, don't, don't. Just because when y'all on that in that position. That y'all always went to bed. And you want to judge everybody else off the standard that y'all have been presenting to the conference. Delaware State knows what they are to this conference. Delaware State knows what they are to this conference. The easiest proof is anti. No, it's not. You're talking about programs that have jumped from two conferences and, and they jumped from two, three conferences in three years, three to four years. That's not a case. That's not a case study. No, I'm, I'm talking about with y'all, man. There's. <laughs> The only coaches that have done a pretty good job with the transition from the MEAC to the Big South to the CAA is the Bowler. Robinson and Ben Hall. Everybody which else. One, which one of those? Is the, which one of those is the Bowler coach? Well, the Bowler is the MEAC. For conferences. Never I mean, I mean, You, you I mean, your jokes. Hey, Look, shout out to the Bowler team, though. You see, the, you see the consist. You see the consistency of what happens when you don't bounce back and forth from conference. But, 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 I mean, Perry, I want to. Perry, I want to go back to this. Right. You have to evaluate this on a per program basis. North Carolina Central, there is a thing that exists right now, currently, called the Celebration Bowl, that pays cash to your program for just going. It's played on national television in front of tens of thousands of people, millions of people. It's played in front of tens of thousands of people. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm, about, I'm about business, right? I'm about business. You cannot convince me because we've been having these conversations, these overarching conversations about value for a long time, right? Value from a business perspective is simple. It's monetary. Value is money. To even try to make, like, dog, that automatically, the FCS playoffs, when we start talking about value, it automatically becomes a secondary, it becomes a, 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 um, a consolation prize when we start talking value. Did I think... Dog, you've seen last year, North Carolina Central and, and, and FAMU have performed better in them two playoffs games than the previous programs that attended those programs. Do I need to remind y'all of some of these scores or some of our programs that went to the FCS pro playoffs previously? Do I need to remind you that we got some programs that went scoreless in FCS playoff games? I ain't talking 20, 25 years ago. I'm talking like a hop, skip, and a jump ago. 
Dog, dog, Central had every opportunity in the world to beat Richmond last year. But just like most most football programs, if your quarterback gets hurt, gets dinged up a little bit, the pro the play the game strategy and approach changes. The game strategy and approach changes. Davis had tweaked his shoulder, got up, and he finished the game like a dog, but the overall approach was completely different. If you go back and watch that game, it's a tell of two halves. The first half, he's healthy, 100% healthy. This looked like we getting ready to run away. Second half, he's not 100% healthy. They end up coming back and doing what they do. Football is too quarterback-centric. It's football, especially college football, is so quarterback-centric that – you have a player like that, that's a that's you know, that's the third, second, second, that's the best in my program, from my perspective, that's the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. Mike, you can't even talk. Your guys' claim to fame in the 2000s is going to the FCS playoffs in 2014 because you guys were the guy who got the draw from the from the needle in a haystack of it was a, a five field, wasn't it? team, it wasn't like a, a, a five team like tie. It was a it was a it was a coin flip. Yeah. It was a coin flip. It's a coin it flip. Like a, it was like a coin flip. If I remember correctly. It was like it was like it was like pick that. a number. It was like pick a number. Banks, one. Ain't, Banks ain't gonna tell you that. He didn't. He didn't know. He don't we, know that. We beat he don't the breaks off of them now. If we beat if we beat that school down the road, we go. We we go to the playoffs. But we didn't. Calls I did five way time. No, it was a coin. Flip. It came down to like some coin flip or something because we beat Morgan. That's why I was wondering, like, what, what, how, bro. We beat them forty. We shut them out. We shut Morgan out that year. It was like forty five nothing or something like that. Oh, Troy just put a score. Yeah, but y'all lost us. Y'all shouldn't have told me that. Y'all shouldn't have told me that. Yeah, but that's the yeah, but that's something. That trophy is is sitting in that basketball arena, proud. It is. I I took a picture of it and everything. I was like, oh, I gotta send this to Banks. Thank you. Thank you. There it is, right there, Zach. Men lie, women lie. Numbers don't. Yeah. You go back, go back and look what the last HB, the last MEAC school that went to the FCS playoffs. Who's the last age? Who's the last MEAC school? Was it school down our way? The, the, to get the win? Yeah, I believe it was. Um, no, no, I said who was the last MEAC school to go to the FCS playoffs prior to us? Prior oh, to us. Um, it was y'all. Yeah, it was us. Yes, it was us against Richmond, clearly enough. And what was the score? Oh, it was like 38 to 10 or something like that. 38 13. I gotta look it up. Tariq Cohn was in that game. Yeah, but we're at, we're back to our, we're down our third quarterback too. So I rest I rest my case. I rest it, my case. It's kind of similar because you know we were down our third quarterback. Y'all lost our quarterback. You know. Yeah, man. I rest my case, man. Like this is stuff that dog. When it come down to these games, if playoff games are, are so important, bro. It's it's just come on, man. 39-10. 39 Yeah, Banks, I, I remember call. y'all. I remember y'all was down to y'all third string quarterback. Banks, I'm gonna call you coin flip. Coin toss. That's what you need to it really was. It was a. It was real live a coin toss. The ads was in the room. And Nasty they the word. And they Nasty went through a coin. Word. They went through a coin toss tournament. It was five. Yo, it was five teams that were tied. Five everybody, teams in there. Everybody was beating each other. Like we, they beat us. We beat Morgan. We beat Bethune. Like you know was, what's the you know what's the funny part? Central lost the first coin toss. <laughs> We was in the first coin toss. We was in the first coin toss against Bethune and lost the coin toss. And that was the last. And that was the last year before the celebration bowl came. That was that was the last year before the celebration bowl. That was the last year before the celebration bowl. Now, could you imagine how this would have turned out if we had the celebration bowl in that place as well? In, in place as well. Yeah, they, we they would have had change, the two, they would have two, two all, different. They would have changed all the rules. All the rules would have had to change, <laughs> bro. The coin toss <laughs> national championship. <laughs> <laughs> it really was though. It was a bunch of coaches in there flipping coins, <laughs> and man, we was the first team they to lose our coins. Did rock paper scissors, like that part of it would have been an easier route. You know you what would've... I? You know what I thought about? They really could have just done like pick a number one through a hundred. Let the commissioner Dennis Thomas. Well, I don't know. If no, no, no. Nah, nah, I don't know who would have wanted to put that in Dennis Thomas' hands. No disrespect to the OG, but I don't think we would have wanted to put that. The only thing that would have been all right is just the fact that you know Hampton wouldn't have been in it. So you know, but because Hampton wasn't part Mike, of the five. Mike, Mike, what are you talking about? What What are you talking about? You don't have, don't respond no more. Don't what are you? Ta- this man ain't talk my Tyler up here. Where this we man start is- to- this man is very upset about the loss his basketball team took today and the loss that his basketball team is going to take tomorrow. Who are they playing tomorrow? Them. Us. Oh, Jesus. Y'all playing them twice? Yeah, both the yeah. women's and the men's. That's wild. Y'all could have just did a doubleheader. Really could have. <laughs> really could have. But the seating, <laughs> the seating, the seating made it like that. Different. It the was the seating, bro. The seating was different. 
The Cedars was just a little bit different, but nah, that was that could've was save money. Could have sent Morgan home early, took him home I'm, one day. But I'm saying, I'm saying that to say though, we we do have we got a lot, we got a lot that to to look forward to, man. I think that there's so much that has there been an HBCU football team over the past 20 years that you believe could have won the first yeah, round. I think uh, so. Yeah, it's two of them. It, I I got two of them that I think could have. The first one is the first one is school down the highway when they went undefeated. Yeah. That program definitely could have, I believe. And I think the, the team the year after probably could have, too. Nah, I ain't going that far. Uh, y'all had lost, after, y'all had, that, that team the year after, y'all had lost a lot on defense. Yeah. I, yeah, think about it. Think about how much y'all had lost a lot on defense. And here's the, here's prefer- the, here's the kicker, too, though, Perry. Here's the kicker, too, Perry. If we're hosting that first-round game, I got 12 HBCUs that would have won a first-round playoff game if we host it. Our problem is every single time we get because, to the playoffs, we on the road. Cause we didn't want to put the bid in. Well, no, not only I, that we didn't. Not only did we not want to put the bid in, bid in, our because of how things work out for our season, it becomes too late for us to put the bid in. Same thing that happened with Central this year, because A&T. it literally came down. It came down to by the time the game between us and uh and Delaware State ended, the bidding process had already ended. We wanted to host the game. We was willing to put up whatever it needed to be put up to be able to host the game. But and it, you know. NCAA takes a cut of that too much of a cut of it anyway because I know I don't know if AT put a bid in if they would have won the big soft Hey, 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 Banks, hey, Banks, hey, relax, bro, relax. Yo, bank, <laughs> not my fault. Yo, <laughs> 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 like not how that works. That's exactly how it works, dog. No, that is the most <laughs> improbable works. chance. Like that's so such left a chance, bro. Come on, bro. I listen. It's fifty fifty, man. We you lost play. the coin toss to Bethune. The same way we lost the we lost the uh Bethune in that season in football, so I ain't tripping. But if we would have lost the coin toss to Morgan State, I would have been ticked off. My AQ baby. That's that not how great. that went. Biz will nah, be gone by twenty twenty five. Like South State has some pretty good squads too. That probably could have did some damage. But you know what, Bisa? It it doesn't. It, you you absolutely right. It doesn't, and this is why we having yeah. the conversation. This is why we had this conversation so much yeah. from a business perspective. I don't think A and T. That's why we talking about it. Because I think I y'all think, would have. I, no, that because y'all, you know that why? y'all was undefeated. No, no, no. I'm talking about the year when we almost won the Big South Conference. I don't think we would have oh. put a bid in because we would have played AR. Why well, the hell would we put a bid in? We were well, just went e- down the street and took over. Even that if stadium. even if y'all won, even if y'all won the Big South that year. You guys would have been overall from an overall rating perspective because there is an overall ranking too that they take yeah. into context as well. So, your but it's overall based on regional. It's regional, so they're going to try to put opponents that are close. Not the not the overall ranking. The overall ranking is what makes it even possible for you to be in the position to be. Like there's some programs that they don't even call to ask who they want to be, and that they make the playoffs. They well, they had some they had some crazy controversy that happened like last year, or the year before. Yeah. Where some teams got got a home got home even though they didn't didn't have the highest bid. There was there was yeah. some crazy stuff that was happening. They just gotta get they gotta get rid of the bidding process, dog. It makes no sense, dog. Have some host cities. If you the higher if you the higher seed, then you just host. If you the higher seed, you host. Yeah. Then, you always, then that means games are always being the Dakotas and Montana's. That sucks. Yeah, That's that a sucks. fact. And let me tell you something, bro. Oh, I say, bro, I ain't I like trying to go. Who, I don't want to go to the NCS playoffs. Not too the weather. Cold. I'm but good it, on the FCS playoff, bro. I like watching the games from my crib. Like when when you guys lost lost the look at that. Richmond, look at that. I swear to goodness it was. I remember that. You remember that day? E, oh, yeah. e, you remember that? When South Carolina State made the playoffs and they had to go up to Appalachian State and it was App, snowing. Uh, App State. <laughs> App, and them App State squads were different back bro, then. Come bro. on, bro. Y'all think those are advantageous football conditions, bro. Don't nobody want to play in that, bro. Man, different. Dog, it Josh. was cold as it was cold as as a polar bear's balls. It, it was cold in Raleigh when I went to that game, but it, it got it in snow. Do you I have, have fright? Yeah, you know, I, I've had a fur coat since I was a kid, so I, I religiously try to re up on. I don't, fur coats I don't do fur coats. I'm just saying, you go to North Dakota, you'd be good. Man, I ain't going to that place, bro. I got me. Hey, a you know face. what's crazy? All jokes aside, when I looked at the bracket and I figured. And I figured we could have beaten Richmond, which we really could have. We really should have beaten. But then your ass had to go. If we had beat Richmond, I would have been cool with us going to Albany because I think we could have beat Albany as well because that defense was terrible. The, our very next spot we would have had to go to that I was Idaho. looking at plane tickets. Idaho. We would have had not Idaho. We would have had to go to South Dakota. No, I thought it was Idaho after that. I thought no, nah, we was we was on we was on the other side of the bracket. They ended up going. To, did oh, Albany end up going to Idaho? I think Albany, Albany went to Idaho if I remember correctly. Okay, well Idaho is neither worse. neither location is optimal. Neither no. places are optimal, bro. They're like, look, man, 
You don't yeah, look, North Dakota State. You don't want to go to North Dakota. Dome. You don't want to go to North Dakota. And Idaho, Idaho has have a dome, dome as well. Idaho has a dome. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, North Dakota has a dome. Does Grambling with Kincaid or Jackson with Sanders make a deep you know, play? No, we don't have a dome. Oh, uh, I think doesn't. I think Jackson with Shador. I think they win the first to say that second year of Shador, not his first second, year, not the first year. His sophomore year, I think they win round one or two. Yeah, I do. I, I, mean, did, I, point, I, I didn't, think, I didn't game, think they was like y'all. that. I didn't think they was like game. that, Zach. And that in Gremlin? So we kept two points going for Central and USA. Central and USA. Uh-oh. Minute 27. Catch. We got the ball. We got the ball. We got the ball right now. Relax. Bro. Don't catch the fade. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> man, y'all at the crib right now, bro. Relax, bro. Stop putting that smart on us right now, bro. My, my ladies, my ladies play on Friday. Don't catch the bro, I, both our men and our women still playing right now. I don't care. Look, man, y'all tournament just started. Look, the CEA played last week. Don't do that. The men played last week. The men tournament in yesterday. Don't do that. Shut up, Mike. You got all the excuses in the world. So how weak are you? Minute 13. 77-74. Let's go, po boy. Win the bonus. And he just fouled him behind the three-point line. Po' boy, stay getting them joints. Come on, Po' boy. We need all three of these. We need all three of these. his name. Just say king. Poor boy is a king is like one of the greatest names. That's his name, Po' boy. Like the fact you thought that through. Like you thought that through. Switch. just started All right, hey, we're going to take a quick commercial break while he's shooting these free throws. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Need to catch up on the news? Head over to hbcunited.com forward slash news and check out all the latest news from across the HBCU sports world. Editorial styles, interviews, articles, directly from BJ Jones himself. Anytime, anywhere, real-time news. That's hbcunightly.com forward slash news. hbcunightly.com forward slash news. Real, present, insightful news the way it should be. Welcome back to HBC Unitedly Live with Joshua Simpson. You see, we got the crew still up here. Listen, um, yeah, new music. Y'all hear y'all hear the new music yeah, up there. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> I was I was yeah, playing yeah. earlier when you did the first one. I'm like, that ain't yeah. the same beat. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. We update, we update the music. Everybody gotta update the music here at the network, too. Man, please, man. I ain't changed my commercial for PNP in weeks and years. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't changed that joint. I ain't changed that joint. Hey, years. listen, everybody got one. Hey, listen, though, a spring ball is, is is open, though, since we talking football and literally everybody, no more Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is this? Who is BDB, yo? BDB. BDB, who is that? Where you go, baby? Turn the morning wall on this joint, BDB. How you keeping uh, look? <laughs> I'm crying. Oh, no just stop. Indian, but look, no more Indian. Who is that? Me, I clearly is you, BDB. Who are you? Tell us who you are so we know who you are. This is why I don't like the internet, man. Cats be hiding in pictures and faces. Yeah, is that a picture of my girl off The Simpsons? It yes, is. it's Lisa. That is absolutely Lisa Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. You got to grow up, BDB. This, whoever this, you are, you got to grow up. I, I'm going to do that one day. I'm just going to have like a random Twitter I handle. I would love to see me. that. Period. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Oh, that's him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, real, real quick, man. Before, hey, that's a good point. That's a good point. Right hey, yeah, give us an update, Herb. Well, we got update. Uh, Grambling's up forty-two to thirty-four. Alabama State eleven fifty-two left in the second. Um, and looks like poor boy King has uh, sank some free throws. I think it's like seventy-nine, seventy-four. Yep. Um, in that game, with a, with a minute um, five left, I'm a little bit ahead yeah. of you. Hey, you know, real quick, man. Big shout out to Langston Texas College. Philander Smith, um, Florida Memorial, and Tougaloo. Those guys start their quest in the NAIA tournament on Thursday, Thursday and Friday. And I just got through talking with uh, Coach Warren over uh, over at Langston, Langston earlier today. Um, you know, he was kind enough to share out uh, the media um, stream for his, for their first game. So for those of you guys out there that follow my feed, check my feed out, and I've got it li- listed for uh, the Sooner Athletic Conference. That's the conference that they play. Back to the line, Fred Cleveland Jr. to the line. Fred Cleveland Jr. to the line with 53.8 seconds left on the clock. North Carolina Central is up 79 to 75 over Maryland Eastern Shore, and uh, Fred Cleveland Jr. is headed to the line to try to open up this gap a little bit more. Um. Shout out to all. Shout out to all our NAI HBCUs, man. Oh my 
God. Y'all love doing that, bro. It's easy we money, man. We don't do that to y'all when our people transfer over to y'all. Hey, look, man. Look, man. We y'all did the same thing doing football season. We had, a lot of, we had a lot of transition. We had a lot of transition in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> to him. He do it on purpose, man. He know. I almost, you know what? See, I wish, I wish, I wish it was that easy for me. It's not not possible. (laughs) It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. (laughs) You see how, and you see how I wore maroon tonight, and he wore that ugly looking, dingy freaking. No, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful peasant peasant blue. No, no, no. It's royal blue. It's royal blue. Yeah, peasant blue. You wait, you wait, you wait till what I wear in the NCAA tournament. Seventy-five, eighty, fifty, fifty seconds left on the clock. Melanie needs to show up with the ball. He shoots the three. He airballs it. KP with the rebound and the foul. Yeah. Back to the free throw line. It's, it's, it's yeah, 45 points. Really yeah, 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 that's where I'm at. I was, I was trying to figure what happened. Mm-hmm. The, the camera He had a clean look now. at it, too. He had a very clear look at yeah, it. Yeah, he did. He was wide open. He was wide open. The real vision is do we decide to stay in the new D2 or elevate to the new FCS within the yes, – bro, the FCS is not going to become the new D2. Y'all got to stop this, bro. <laughs> It's Morgan. What is, what is going on? You heard Morgan about you heard about, that, you heard about that split. You heard about that split with the FCS with um with the uh, college football playoffs with with, with yeah. P five and with the P four and G five. Yeah, it's all over the college football playoffs, which it's going to happen regardless. Like, but if 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 FCS FCC is and Big Ten get sixty percent of the pot, and then the ACC and the Big Twelve is getting like thirty percent of the pot, and then everybody I ain't mad. Like, I ain't yeah. mad. Bro, they FCC bringing in nine, pretty much. They bringing FCC in Big Ten is just like yeah, you know who <laughs> run this. They bringing in eighty percent of the money. No comment. They bringing in eighty percent of the money on their level. Of course. I just Nobody. don't think the ACC is going to exist in three years. So I don't even know why they work it, rework it. Anymore. This is true. North Carolina, North Carolina e, you know what I saw today? North Carolina going to save e, it, man. Yeah, you know what I saw for the first time today? Man, North Carolina. You know what I saw for the first conference has got nine lives, man. So why you calling the Bojangles Conference, bro? Relax. Because that's what it is. <laughs> it's not the Bojangles Conference. <laughs> hey, but Erica, you know what I saw for the first time today? I what? saw the brand. I saw the brand new SMU ACC commercial spot. Oh God! They got they got these horses. For those of y'all, some of y'all might not may not have seen it yet, but they got these horses running on the beach. Right, they got the horses running on the beach, <laughs> right, and they all in a group. I swear to God, I swear if I'm lying, I'm frying. Yeah, like I was listen. watching the commercial, I'm like, what is this for? Like, this commercial is not bunch, good for Twitter. This is gonna be a whole bunch of a whole bunch of horses <laughs> running on the beach, and then all of a sudden it just pops up on the screen. SMU ACC coming next season. It was Mustangs. I, I swear that was the commercial. That was all the commercial was. I guess they, they got made the death, their way to the death Atlanta penalty Coast. around that. That is school that got the death penalty, right? They yes, did. Yeah, yeah, they did the whole, whole 30 for 30 on them. They yep. absolutely did. That, that story was wild. But yeah. I mean, the bag man is legendary in 50 states. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Zach. Come on, man. Like, that's, let's keep that's, it argu- that's arguably the biggest and most hey, famous I, example I, 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 of the, the death penalty. Hey, Perry. Hey, Perry. Hey, Perry. It is. It is that the new payout for the celebration. The new payout for the celebration, bro. Listen, bro. These leaders, I, I gotta get them kudos. As as much as I am critical of them, as critical of them as I am, they. I don't know who they listening to, and I don't know what conversations they having. But as it pertains to these things, they're starting to come along with the times. The problem is gonna be with. The new, their new normal may not be the normal that everybody else is operating on in the future, though. They may be catching up to where everybody is right now, but by the time they get there, everybody else will have moved to something different. And so I, I do think that it's important to have some conversations, that we're having some conversations, in particular with the MEAC, because I think the insight of our generation, I think the insight of our generation can be able to help them to be able to understand it a little bit better. I don't know if that's happened on the SWAC side, but I know on the MEAC side, they are they are a little bit more open to having some conversations with, with millennials and fringe millennials about what this needs to look like for the future as it pertains to television and media broadcast rights, which is important, right? Clearly, they're not listening to us when it comes to the basketball tournament, and I don't think that they're going to. At least the camera's better. This is much better I mean, than what I saw earlier they got, today. They got like, they got like 1,200 people there. Right now, that ain't bad for for Wednesday night. I mean, for we'll Wednesday night, like, let's see what it look like when it's near the weekend. I mean, I yeah, guess, Saturday I gonna mean, be crazy. I, I get that the CIAA is a 
is a different tournament for them to get seven thousand people on the Tuesday. Is that's yeah, that's I shouldn't nuts. compare, but it's, yeah, that's a that's different. Un, that's, that's unprecedented. That's you know? a that's crazy. Seven thousand. Yeah, they, they got history yeah. too. I mean, you're talking about well, yeah, and I think that's the biggest. I think that's the biggest thing when we talk about terms like the CIAA. You know, yeah. history and and the fact that it's been so established over such a long period of time has a lot to do with it. It has a lot oh, to do man. with you know what what comes up. And that's kind of what I was talking about in my show. We talk yeah. about tournaments. It's like, look, you appreciate know, you, P. Yeah, you you start with the product. Oh, shoot! He just dunked on him. Yeah, that's why. That's why I said they got to foul him. Or that dunk. Ooh. That, 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 that. Ooh. <laughs> I'm ahead of y'all, Ooh. but I just Ooh. no. I, no I, we Central, had the same point. We can't shoot free throw line. Yeah, the free throw line. Yeah. It took too long to foul. I don't know why they were hesitating. Markham, you are 29. You are so far away from their target audience, my brother. They not they not even targeting me and Erica and people who are in their 30s. They, they, they might are be targeting, targeting me. They but are the targeting just the limits, barely. Man. They really targeting like they barely targeting Dave. Gen they X really, tar- they really targeting. Guys. They really so targeting her. Herb. Herb mm. fifty. They really targeting. They, they, they're going after yeah. her. They're going after her. <laughs> the her. The her yeah. Tank clan. Hey Herb. Hey Herb. Hey, Herb. 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 I will say, bro, the ads, the ads are doing it for school. You have folks in the comments like, man, that dude. Hey, Herb. Hey, Herb. My bad, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, y'all only down by two. We up by. I mean, y'all only up by two. Yeah, 81-83. We good though. Game man, over. You gotta make both game of these over. free throws. You gotta game make over. both of these free throws. Game over. I mean, that's Fred, man. We good. Game over. Yeah, I know, man. You gotta get an Aggie to close it out. They spent uh, too long to Bro, he is not a freaking Aggie. Like, damn, Josh, that's nasty. He work, spent bro. two semesters at y'all. <laughs> my bad, her. Hey, her. My bad, dog. My bad, dog. My bad, her. My bad, bro. Man, hey, her, man. Her, man. I apologize. Hashi Tashi, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, man. You can't be giving out the government stats like that. I didn't say what the age was. I'm sorry, bro. I messed that up. My bad. Black don't crack. Black don't crack, though. Black don't crack, bro. We could have never done that. Hey, I tell you when I did know. I tell you when I did know that you was close to that, though. Man, don't tell me about that. When you showed up. I've always liked those hats, though. I've always liked them. It was since when I was a young man. Game time. Game time. Absolutely. Game time. The game's over. Game time. Yeah. Game time. The game is over. Game time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll take it. We'll take it, Mo. Mo, we'll take it, Mo. Cut it out, man. We'll take it, dog. All right. Score, up, score update. Grambling 46. Alabama, I can't, I can't, Alabama I can't. State 40. Bebop Cole. I can't. I can't, dog. I can't. I can't. Just know, listen. Uh, first of all, I, I want to make sure I'm clear that that this is all already one of the one of the probably middle of the road payout as it retains the bowl games as it currently exists. Y'all don't want to know what some of these other bowl games are paying plan, paying like it, it's bad, bro. It's really really bad. So it already is a middle of the road uh, bowl game payout. I think that this next one, this next payout agreement, will be. It will put us clearly in the top top quarter of payouts as it pertains to bowl games. And y'all gotta understand how important that is. We're talking about outside of the um New Year Six Bowls, uh, outside of New Year Six Bowls and bowl games with high major G five programs involved. This would put us in the realm of those. And and here's why it's important. Because there are some of our programs who really do have FBS aspirations. Though the FBS may end up looking like it's a split FBS between multiple different uh, subdivisions, there are some of our programs that have it. Good win, baby. 87, 81, North Carolina Central Beast, UMES. Um, there are some of our programs that have aspirations to go there. There are some programs that have already turned down some invitations to FBS programs. I will not say those names, but I know this to be a fact. This is not an opinion. This is a fact that there are some programs Two that I know of for sure, but I'm almost positive there probably was some other ones. Two programs I know of for sure that turned down the FBS conference invitation uh, from a, from a pro- from a conference on the FBS level. Uh, nonetheless, though, why do you think they turned them down? Uh, time, timing. They didn't feel like it was it was the right time. Yeah, because the thing they didn't feel like walk, right if time. you walk into a conference and you ain't ready. Yeah, if you're not ready, it especially looks, going especially bad. going there, especially going there, you got to be ready. You got to be absolutely ready. And I think both of these programs in particular, 
said, um, though it was good for them to possibly be thinking about moving together, uh, I think that, that I think they figured it wasn't time. It wasn't the right time. Uh, should we consider adding an extra bowl game? Absolutely. I've always been a proponent of us expanding this to a playoff system where we have a semifinal. We have two semifinal games, and then we go. And I know the natural response everybody has had is, well, the MIAC could have a uh, the MIAC could have a semifinal game if they just had a conference championship game. Oh, uh, no, that ain't what I was gonna go at. I'm gonna go at y'all. Got to get rid of some classes. If y'all really gonna really, if y'all serious about it? We gotta get rid of smooth. So, nah, I said the swag has to get rid of some classics and some games, or move them up. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't they're, see it they're never gonna do it. And they're that's never my gonna point. Do it. So we, what we gonna have the celebration bowl, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, you'd have you'd have a better chance of Donald Trump being a Rhodes Scholar than that. Happened. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty that's much. Good. I do like I like the playoff system for, or the, for the celebration. He actually goes to jail. Your odds are better there too. <laughs> hey, you better hope. Hey, listen, uh, listen, man, y'all. I, I ain't getting into that, dog. I don't. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. bro. Look, we already know we're running for governor in the state that you live in, so we we man, not worried about him one bit. Well, yeah. Morgan, I, I, Morgan has dreams of national relevance. <laughs> 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 that's, that's nasty work. Hey Perry, funny, we, hey, Perry, once we add these next two teams, yeah. Once we add these new these these next two programs, I see us having I mean, a championship game. I mean, like, let's be clear, man. Like, the SWAT at one point only had 10 teams, too. Like, y'all have yeah. a championship game. Yeah, once they we had once we had these next two games. They can get two more teams, they can get a championship game. They can probably yeah, do one, it. Yeah, once once, once they we, almost nah. did before the pandemic Who? when all the teams um and um the, the MIAC. The yeah, they yeah, they did. They were gonna split. They were gonna do one in the spring. They were gonna do one in the spring. Yep. They before were before the pandemic. Yep. And I and I I was hoping that we was gonna end up getting a chance to do that because it would have gave us a chance to 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 test it. To test it. You can't do it right now with six teams. I mean, that's just that makes no sense. No, but I, I think if we we get back to eight. We get back to eight, which that's going to happen. I give a, I give it six to eight months for the announcement to come down on these two programs. Um, I know that these two programs currently right now are raising money to be able to make their their uh, transition successfully. So maybe Hampton um, will go back. Ah, we won't Hampton. I'm joking. I'm joking, man. Yeah, we won't Hampton ain't going back. We won't Hampton. But um, we 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 went more Hampton even if they wanted to come back. No disrespect. Y'all would take, y'all would take Hampton. No. Man. Y'all would why would why, what 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 would it do for us though? I mean, you get back the Howard Hampton rivalry in the conference. We already got that. We already you got the in, Howard in the conference. You'll get it back in the conference. It, oh, it, you necessary. think that that's that you think that's very necessarily it's not necessary. It's not necessary. We play them out of the conference. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> and it's during the time period when it's hot. Like I like I don't want y'all to come back because I enjoy playing y'all doing. Oh no, I always prefer that Eagle in September. I, I prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. So when we first moved out the conference, I was like, "Oh, this is great. That means Aggie Eagle's gonna be back in September again." That was the first thing I said. Because I think I knew, we, I, I knew we I, were going to stop playing, that. y'all. P, we talked about that. P, me and Do- Dr. Cavill and I, and and all of us collectively, have talked about that. About there being a situation where there will be three HBCU, uh, two automatic bids for the MIAC and the SWAC champion. Then you have two at-large bids um, for the, the next highest-rated HBCU that's from the traditional HBCU conferences, and then who will be the automatic. Now, that that would be contingent on the type of season they have. We're not bringing any of them three teams if they are as bad as they were last season. No disrespect. But I don't think any of them would have gotten an at-large bid if we had a playoff season system now. Um, I mean, but who would have – well, Howard would have got the bid this year. <laughs> I would have got the automatic bid. Um, uh, FAMU would have got the automatic bid. Central would have got the at-large bid. And then who was the second out of the swag? I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, that's Prairie View. You gonna put Prairie View in there? I think because they played in the championship game. I think you almost would have had to. I mean, you could argue. I mean, you could argue. Hampton, Hampton beat Howard, Grambling. Yeah, but know. they. Yeah, but it's not based off of your performance against I, I, HBCUs. It'd be no, about no, no, your. But I mean, they beat. They beat. They beat. They beat the CAA champions too. They beat Richmond. I mean. They, yeah, but they finished five and seven. Uh, five and six. They didn't play twelve games last year. Five or six. They finished with an under under five hundred record. That don't get you. That don't get you at large bid. I mean, I mean, Prairie View had a winning record. I, I, mean, I, I would probably put Jackson there to be honest with you. I probably put Jackson there. I, with honestly, all of I, mean, State. I just feel like we should keep it Miac Swack and keep it simple. Yeah, I ain't mad at that either. Or Tennessee State. Tennessee State had a winning record. I, I think there's a world. I think there's a world where Tennessee State would have loved to have joined one of these conferences. Yeah. Have we, well, we'll see what happens when they get the new president. 
Well, speaking of, I mean, speaking of postseasons and tournaments, man, I mean, I think um, there's a lot of buzz about, the you know, the formation of an HBCU-centric postseason basketball tournament. You need to do one. Especially in light of, especially in light of the changes to the to the NI, uh, to the NIT, and with the CBI and the C, well, the CIT is defunct, but the CBI is has always been kind of pay for play. If they don't change their format, then you know the landscape is ripe for something like that to happen. So they ain't gonna change, and you you know you know that Herb. I know you know that they ain't. This is the first year the NIT is gonna do it based on the on the RPI on the net, right? I hate, yeah. I hate that they're doing this system is stupid. No disrespect, but it is it's just ridiculous. Oh, you're right. It's absolutely stupid. I mean, but be- but it opens the door for us to be able to create our own thing, um, postseason wise, and so. Uh, Looking forward to being able for people to hear that as well. Hear about that as well. Yeah, because because the thing is, like, if if Jackson State, if the Jackson State women don't win that tournament, yeah, they don't. Their net, their net ain't gonna be high enough. Nope. They gotta be. They gotta be like in the top top seventy five, top eighty, probably to get an invite. Yeah. So it's sad. Yep. That is sad, bro. That's why I said Jackson State's got to run. Jackson State got to run it, man. They got to run this tournament. They got to run I, it. But I, I mean, the point is, I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't though. No, I mean, that's we can say the same thing for last year. They end up losing the finals. I don't know. I think this team is better than last year's team. I agree. They should get a, at least a fourteen seed. They should get a fourteen seed. They're probably gonna end up fifteen, but they should get fourteen. They should. And and the, you know. They need an up. They need they need one of the higher net teams that can't make the tournament get an upset, like a Stony Brook don't get there or somebody yeah. like that, and then they could probably get the 14 seed. But right now they're playing up with a 15 seed. Mm. But even then, I mean, rematch against LSU, maybe. Who? If they get the 15 seed, maybe. Who you talking about? Who you talking Jackson about? Jackson State, the women. Oh, I don't know, bro. Hmm. I mean, you, you, I mean, I'd rather them play against one of the, uh, what's the, uh, the team that's coming out the big team, uh, not Iowa, um, you do not want to play Iowa, Nebraska, <laughs> Iowa, uh, uh, Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska. Yeah. I'd rather them play against Nebraska. I 13. think they match, I think they would match up well against Nebraska, but I think it would take them to get to a 13 seed to get against Nebraska. Yeah. yeah it's going to be hard for either, it's going to be hard for either Norfolk or Jackson to get past that to at least to even get on the 15 line. To be quite honest, no, I think Jackson got Damn. 15. Now, nah, Jackson will get 15. Jackson will get 15. They were I'm, I'm very confident of that. that Jackson record, will get 15. I think, be 15. I think Jackson they'll get at least a 15. Now, now, if Jackson just you know puts the you know Dang, the, the breaks bro. off, if Jackson just beats the breaks off of everybody in the tournament and wins in a specific way, yeah, they can really they can move you know they. They have potential to get to the fifteen or or. No, higher. I think they got, I think they locked in. I think on they locked. I think the they'll get the fifteen seed if they win the tournament. They're going to get a fifteen seed. If they not, if they go monsters on them, then you might have a discussion about fourteen, or if something crazy happens. Um, you know, Jackson State might want to be A and T fans. If you take out Stony Brook, y'all might get what y'all want, man. Stony Brook don't All win right. that tournament. Oh god, because Stony Brook right now is projected as a thirteen seed, so that would help. Cause they won't no, make- why why you think they gonna there's not a world in this world where they gonna be fans of y'all y'all made it like that and y'all I'm, made no, it no like we that. did not no no yeah, we did, did not that we was all not. y'all why are you always trying to blame us for everything we be out here quiet no chilling, y'all don't no, and then y'all, y'all then y'all then y'all, 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 y'all the opposite yeah. of quiet then y'all, thank y'all, you. y'all don't thank y'all you you hear this mention us I will be quiet chilling minding my business then I get mentioned then I'm not there no more Dave Dave you make y'all <laughs> I'm not lying. You, what are we talking about? We watch you every day. Every single day, bro. Every day. You watch PNP too? I do. Listen, I see you on Twitter. I see you on these shows. You I, watch P- I watch PNP. I watch PNP. You I definitely do. two shows this week. <clears throat> this your third show this week, ain't it? No, but I had to do two. P- we did two PNP shows this week. We did one on Monday and Tuesday. Free eights has been crazy. Y'all did. Wait, y'all did Monday and Tuesday? Mm-hmm. But y'all got to do a better job communicating y'all having a show, bro. Well, the thing is, me and Rich, this is how that conversation went on Monday. I get a text message going live, and I'm like, let's wait till Tuesday. Then we're like, 
You know what? Let's go live. Go for an hour. <clears throat> so we went for we went, we went live at seven. We had about at close seventeen hundred people watching. Pretty good. All right. Okay. Mm. I guess. Anywho, um, <laughs> I thought you was getting ready to say something about the school down the highway. That's why I wanted to segue right there. Um, nonetheless, though, when we look at this um, tomorrow slate, all right, we got to talk about tomorrow slate. Um, whew, it's gonna be some barn burners tomorrow, yo. And believe it or not, I got some games tomorrow. That I, think, I got some games tomorrow that I think is gonna be incredible. Hey, Herb, you want to go ahead and take the swag tomorrow for for tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Um, the game that immediately comes to mind um, is that nightcap, mm -hmm. and that's Jackson State and Texas Southern. Mm -hmm. First thing that comes to mind is point guard matchup. Chase Adams, P.J. Henry. Henry. You know, I, I mean, look, I just – I look at that game. You know, there's a lot of star power in that game. You got Ken Evans, you know, SWAC player of the year in that game. You got the defensive player of the year, you know, and, and Mr. Coleman, um, Mr. O'Neill, rather, uh, or Jackson State squad. Mm -hmm. um, and Texas Southern's just Texas Southern. They're battle tested. Um, so Terry is mortal being back for them. That's big. That's, that's big. That that's dude, big. If, you, if you saw that kid freshman year, that dude's a dog. That dude is, I mean, he's rounding back in the, in the shape at the right time. And like I said, I think that game's going to be that game's going to be the marquee game of the of the first round, to be quite honest with you. Um, that second game, that first game though, Bethune Cookman and Southern, I you know, hey, I think that's an upset alert. Uh, yeah, I a think, lot of folks uh, are saying that Bethune might clip him, man. Yeah. That's, that's, Bethune, Bethune is arguably one the best offensive team in the con in the conference right now. Um, who in this in this tournament? Um, you say Bethune, Bethune is? Yeah. You look at their guard rotation that they got, um, you know, next to UAPB, those guys were just as – those guys were lights out from behind the arc. Um, <laughs> has Bethune, anybody yeah. – hey, has anybody checked on G? Has anybody talk, checked on G, GA from, uh, from from all court? Nah, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he walked off that court. He's furious. He's hey, look, furious. Hey, look, furious. On, his, on his Twitter right now, the last thing he tweeted was "F y'all," and he That's tweeted. All it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, G. Hey, G. I swear, bro. Oh, that was this is nasty, bro. Oh man, but go ahead, go ahead, my fault. Go ahead. Yeah, man. And, tournament, man. Yeah, dude. You know, I mean, done, those two games. I think the X factor in that game, though, is Southern getting point guard play out of the, out of the you know out of the import from France. Um, again, I'm not going to try to pronounce that dude's name because every time I do, I butcher it, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> but that guy, that point guard that they got for Southern, man. Um, He's nice. Yeah. If they can keep, if they can hold on to that core, and I mean, you know, just to be honest with you, I think Southern's coach has done one heck of a job with that squad this year. You know, that squad is, you know, has a, you know, a lot of new parts. Not too many returns. That you know, didn't have any, you know, too many returning members of that team, mm -hmm. and he molded that team into a really good team. Um, Thanks, Perry. Appreciate it. I'll let you pronounce it. <laughs> Do my say. Do my say. Um, Do my say. But um, but yeah, I think um, that game is gonna be that game is gonna be a barn burner too, man. Uh, I think um, a lot of people are calling that you know an upset special because you know Bethune Cookman is extremely talented offensively and they got it you know they got an x factor in their own and in, in zion Harmon, man that dude you know he just decides to put his mind to it he's going to put up 25 or 30 points a night you ain't lying so that's something that you know we we really have to keep an eye on you know i'm just but, i'm just i'm worried i'm worried that um that that's something that everybody is looking at that, that that everybody's looking at that i mean zion zion has the ability to go for 30 Every night in this in these darn in this darn tournament, if he wants to, yeah. But I'm pretty sure that everybody is going to be keying on that. Score. We sure. got a we got a score update. Grambling 53, Alabama State 47, 317 left in the second. Mm. 
I'm a little behind. Still, still two possessions. Yep. Close, man. Do not let Grambling get hey. clipped here. Oh my God. Bro. Oh, it's a, it's gonna be oh just my just God, bro. Mass chaos. Oh, mass mass hysteria. He wanted army anarchy. Here, <laughs> <Yeah, good. laughs> I want it to happen. I need chaos. <laughs> Why I you need it. Chaos? I need it. I yeah, need it. Fun. And I know. And one other thing too, man. I know um, they, you know, they went out in the quarterfinals in the OVC. But shout out to Penny Collins, man, and that Tennessee State squad, dude. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen those guys play, man, he's got an excellent core to that team. And if he retains all those kids, they are going to be a problem next year. They really are. Uh, he just landed another Tennessee Mr. Basketball, you know, this year, you know, as part of his you know, the income and recruiting class next year. So, yeah, that dude is that dude's putting in work, man. Um, there's a lot of really good basketball going to, that's still being played, you know, in the postseason right now. Um, like I said earlier, man, if you're not tuning into the Division Two and and NAIA tourneys, you know, big shout out to you know Fayetteville State. I'm still, you know, everybody is still really irritated about the fact that Virginia State women are still, you know, got the snub that they got. Somebody tweeted about why, and I'm like, oh. yeah, yeah. I mean, my boy Inkblot, you know, my boy Inkblot really uh, kind of broke it down. I, I get it, but I still no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I it's just I understand. yeah. You could be it. It's it it. Yeah. When, when I, I mean, saw the tweet, I was like. Yeah, I'll just I'll just say that the I'll just say that even with that the eye test for both of those teams I've seen both of those teams is no, but how uh, much is that? But how much is the eye test versus who you beat? Like, well, that's the well. I think that's, that's what it boils down to, right? I think it's, there it's is a, lies com the it's a combination of both. You right yeah. there. It's a combo for both. It's a yeah. combination of both, and it depends. And I think you know which side of that they weigh toward will depend on. Um, Depend on the person. Depend on the yeah. voter. What was the quote committee. he said? He said the best, the worst loss. The worst loss for them was better than their than Virginia State's worst loss. Yeah, they, and which, yeah. Yeah, uh, man. I don't. Yeah. I, I, just, yeah. I don't like measuring. I don't like measuring yeah. losses. Yeah, you know, I that, really don't. Bro. Yeah, that's just like you know, you know, needle inside of a needle type deal. Facts. Um, Facts. But you know, we'll talk about the men's side on the D two level, man. It, look. Um, I feel, but you know, I'm really kind of irritated about the about the draw that Benedict got. You know, for yeah, Benedict to do for yeah, Benedict yeah. to do the business that they that they've been doing all year. You know, those guys perennial top twenty five. They were top ten at one point in time during the year, and they draw the top seed in the entire tournament, defending national champion uh, Nova Southeastern. Anybody seen those guys? That's the defending national champion, ain't it? Yeah, those guys ain't those guys ain't no joke, man. Um, All right, real quick, let me make sure I get to the MEAC for tomorrow. Uh, on the men's side, uh, six o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ESPN Plus. Uh, Morgan State takes on Howard tomorrow, the uh, number four seed and number five seed, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, right? Number four and five seed tomorrow at six o'clock p.m. tomorrow. That'll be the opening game for the MEAC tomorrow, and then to close the night out. We got number three, South Carolina State, and number six, Delaware State, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ESPN Plus on the men's side. Um, any thoughts, any quick thoughts, uh, lady and gentlemen, lady and gentlemen, um, on on those matchups? I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough game tomorrow. Yeah, I think the Howard, Howard, Howard Morgan. The Howard and Morgan is gonna be a lot closer than what it than what it looks. Play. Howard's, dealing with, Howard's dealing with a lot of injuries right now. Um, we're yeah. coming in pretty battered to the tournament, so um, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I expect to win, but I I don't think it'll be a, a runaway like it was at the end of the season this year. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, speaking of Howard Morgan um, on the women's side today, we did get Howard defeating Morgan State forty nine to forty four in their first round game. Um, um, and then we also got Norfolk State uh, doing what we all kind of expected them to do against South Carolina State. Uh, they beat South Carolina State 75 to 43. No, it wasn't as bad as before. 
if, if there's any consolation is that it wasn't South Carolina State had a, a valiant effort today. They did have a valiant effort. They Much did. more of a valiant effort. <laughs> um, and so tomorrow on the women's side, uh, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ESPN+. Plus, We've got Delaware State. we got number three, North Carolina Central, against number seven, Delaware State. I mean, number six, Delaware State, tomorrow at 2 p.m. And then we've got at 12 o'clock noon tomorrow um, to open up the day. We've got uh, Maryland Eastern Shore and Coppin State playing tomorrow. Um, number four and number five seed playing tomorrow. And that'll be on ESPN Plus as well. Um, all games during the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference tournament will be on ESPN Plus until you get to the championship game on the men's side, which will be on ESPNU. And then the women's championship game will still be on ESPN Plus, but there will be a national re-air that will happen on ESPNU at 8, 8.30 in the morning, which is nasty, nasty, disgusting work. Um, no, no comment. But no no yeah. comment. Yeah. Um, well, a quick update. We got one minute left. Uh, Gramlin State is up 54 to 40. If, is that correct? No, 54, 54, 54 to 50. 54 to 50 with uh, a little bit over a minute left in the game. Hurt. Yeah. Well, actually, right now, it should be under a minute. Under so. a minute left in the game. Um, please make sure you guys are watching all the games. If you happen to be in the area of either uh, Birmingham and or Birmingham and or Norfolk, Virginia, please make sure you guys stop by and go show some love. 21.4 seconds left in the game um, is what we just got the update. Thank you, Sean and Edwin. Um, looks like Grambling is going to end up pulling that game out. Um <laughs> and a tough one, and a tough one, man. Uh, right, that just goes to show. Yeah, I heard. Gotta okay. check on you, man. It's okay, man, man. It's like I, it's like I said, man. You know, it depends on you know which offensive team is going to show up for us, and yeah. we got Listen, our answer. Y'all, I mean, y'all weren't slated to make the tournament, were you? No, no. They end up so making you, it the last. But that should, but that should tell, you, but that should tell you, you something. Did okay. Well, that was, that was good. The way A and M was going in on y'all. Well, I, I don't. I don't pay attention to. I don't pay attention to the kids on the hill. That was the, that the was normal awful. kids. It was. It was. It was, it was Jay White. Her, Herb. It was there all was a, Jay White. Whatever yeah. it is, you need to say it's Jay White. There was a, there was a, yeah, we, there was yeah, a spot we, in my heart. There was a spot in my heart that was rooting for an A and M. Yes. Alabama State final. Yes. Just for the strength. Yes. Like sometimes you want to see things off the strength. Yeah. I mean, no, 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 no moments. Well, all of it being in Alabama. Now, I'll, happen, now, but now I'll just say this, all rivalry aside, I think the futures for both programs are extremely bright, to be quite honest with you. Jay White, um, you are dis you are no, a disgusting no, person, Jay White. You I are messing with, I ain't messing with Jay White. I'm not messing with, mess with Jay, man. This is some of your worst work here, Jay White. This is I'm nasty man. work, bro. Nasty Jay White, work. Jay White, why did y'all do that to them Alabama State cheerleaders like that? Why that was hilarious. Do look at how bad. <laughs> look at how quickly he so quickly was ready to put this in the chat. Look at what he, how he put this in the chat. W R E J Y. This is nasty, bro. It's nasty work, man. Nasty work. All right. All right. Um, let's go last ten, man. Let's go last Wait. ten. Let's start with you. E. There's one more game, man. One more, more game. game. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I'm, go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. No, I apologize. There's, there's go ahead. One more, there's one more game, man. The Lady Aggies are playing on Friday. That's Friday week. <laughs> no, but don't. This is the last show before the next one. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know. I might go live tomorrow. I don't know. You're not going live tomorrow. I might. No, you're not. No, you're not. Unless y'all lose. You might go live to be angry. We're but, not playing tomorrow. Good. Well, our women play tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Unless y'all lose tomorrow. We're going to win. So we play I believe in us. We play we play Friday at two thirty. We got a double bye. The Lady Aggies play Friday at two thirty um, against the winner of Hostra and and William and Mary. Y'all should awesome. y'all should win that. No issues. To be quite mean, honest we, with you, we only played both of them once this year, so it's gonna be a tough game either way. Hofstra played pretty good today, man. They look good. I want to say something so bad, but I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna chill. Thank you, Eric. Eric just gave me his finger. I'm gonna yeah. chill. Peace. <sighs> Peace. Final, we got a final. We have a yeah, final. Yeah, uh, it's a <laughs> 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 it is, is, Grambling, is. is Grambling State bring their rolling drum to the basketball game? No, they do not. Oh, <laughs> 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 <I wonder. laughs> 
Yeah, man. Uh, shoot. Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, I'm looking at the stats Banks, now. Banks, hopefully, you, for, hopefully Morgan has a school left in the tournament by Friday. How about you relax? Oh, snap. It get yeah. real for y'all tomorrow. Hey, Banks, it get real for y'all tomorrow, bro. If y'all lose tomorrow. If they lose to Howard in both games. Dog, you can't. Yo, you are not going to hear it. You, yeah, you, 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 you might as well take a hiatus for the rest of the summer. Oh, you my not have to, God. Listen, you might not get show for the MD on Monday. You can't be out here. Look, yo. Yeah, man. that's gonna be nasty, bro. That's nasty. Yo, right like there. you, you can't, bro. That would mean y'all have. Lo- oh my god, <laughs> they're losing to him and everything. I'm they're losing counted. everything. I'm they're counted. losing everything. Yeah, <laughs> Your last dude. hope is gonna be softball, and right now. Y'all ain't beating out. Y'all hey, not shout out, hey, shout out to Dela- hey, shout out to Delaware. Hey, shout out to Delaware State softball team too. Shout out yeah. Delaware State softball team. They just had an impressive win. Um, the last man, they are man. The conference from top to bottom Howard, is like Howard, that. Yo, that yeah. Howard squad is different, bro. They are. They are different. different. They are different. Man. They are different, bro. They really are. They really. Are. I want to make oh, sure I get this uh, get this proper shout out to to Delaware State softball team. Um. Cause they had a big win uh, last couple of days. I really just seen it, man. This was this was great. Appreciate you, P. Appreciate you, bro. Real talk, yeah, man. Real talk. Appreciate you, bro. Um, Bank said his last hope is softball. <laughs> no, man. Look, look. Yo, <laughs> hey, hey, Banks. Banks, look at me. Banks, look at me. Clear. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Dave. Hold on, Dave. Hold on, Dave. Hold on. Say it again, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Banks. <laughs> Banks. Hey, Banks. You better win a MIAC title this year, bruh. Banks. <laughs> Banks. <laughs> uh, 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 we already got one. Where's yours? Banks. <laughs> Banks. Hey, hey, Banks. He is he is holding that bowling championship over your Dog, head. Dog. Like, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. When you got a chance to win a national championship, and don't, don't get it twisted. The MEAC will represent that thing well if we do win a national championship, Joe. Like they no, didn't win the last I, one. I, I, you, you ain't seen us post y'all at all about that bowling stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they don't know, man. They post, the they conference. They put it in basketball. I mean, they, they, still they, in basketball. They, they still got A&T projected on the scope for the tournament. Oh, that sweet? was nasty. No, no, that, was, no, that, no, was that was cold. That was cold. That was cold. No, but you know what the crazy thing is? No. You weren't supposed to tell him. <laughs> hey, listen, fam, you and Bethune, y'all was on there too. Yo, yo why have you Yo, know, real Cold talk, blooded. I looked at the I looked at the court and I'm like, oh, is that man. the same one from like 1995? Like, is hey, that the same hey, one? Banks, hey, Banks, hey, Banks, we're not. Hey, Banks, we're not officially playing esports as a conference yet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> listen, and I'm going to keep it up with y'all. Hey, man, I love esports. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I love esports, but we're not there yet. Yeah, Shout out I'm to the Iron Shout out to Iron Vision. I don't want the NCAA regulating esports anyway. Me neither. I don't want you to. I don't want them involved. Let them kids make that money. No, I don't want them involved at all. Let them get that 100 k when they win these win these tourneys. Exactly. Let them get their bread. Yeah, but we need we need it as an official sport, though. We no, need we it to count. Don't. I don't yeah, we want do. the NCAA. Well, let's just say, let's just say NACA, NACA is the is the is the best <laughs> governing body for that for the schools, not the NCAA. Division, yo, are you it, gonna be out here trying to go, count buddy. Iron Division titles? This is gonna be the most hilarious thing ever. Because when Cold Steel comes through, y'all gonna lose that. Too. That's nasty. That's nasty, Nick. That's nasty, bro. It's cold blooded. That's nasty. Nick. All right, hey, let's I mean, go. We, we got we, we got we got thirty seconds with y'all too, so. We got 30 seconds. We got 30 seconds. Let's go uh, last 10. Let's go to E. E, let's go to you last 10. Uh, I just want to shout out Howard Athletics, Howard Softball. They played the University of Tennessee, which is also a family school of mine. Um, even though we lost 11 to 4, the, the ladies played well, and there was a lot of cool bonding between the two schools. So that was really awesome. So um, shout out to the softball team. And good luck tomorrow against Morgan for the men's basketball. <laughs> Her last 10. Yeah, man. Just big shout out to all the HBCUs that are remaining in these conference tournaments, man. Again, tomorrow and Friday, make a point to follow, you know, folks like Clark Atlanta, Benedict, uh, Langston, Texas College, you know, Florida Memorial, uh, Tougaloo, Philander Smith, um, who I found out today, I had no clue that Todd Day was head coach of Philander Smith that that says a lot. <laughs> I mean, anybody who's familiar with Todd Day, man, that, that he was part of those just epic, you know, Arkansas Nolan Richardson squads. Um, yeah, man, just catch those guys, man. You know, for, give your support. 
and tune in to us on Sunday, you know, nine o'clock, man. We're going to have a, we got a lot to talk about, man, given, you know, all this stuff that's happening. So yeah, just come check us out, man. David. All right, y'all, y'all, y'all need to support these tournaments, man. I need y'all at these tournaments, get to these tournaments. All right. And shout out to the Nancy baseball team. They got some votes in the top 25 this week. Um, and you know, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it short and simple for now. Um, Miak, shout out to Miak staying in Norfolk till 2027 so we can end those debates. We ain't gotta talk about it no more. <laughs> um, you know, we, we just, we just, we just, we just y'all enjoy Norfolk, but I, I, you know, but you know, you know, you got, you got a young Miami there and, you know what I'm saying? So they do have things after 9 p.m. in, in Norfolk, Virginia. Actually, it's in Hampton. Well, that's that's literally one thing, and it wasn't even in Norfolk. It's in Hampton. It's in Hampton. <laughs> yeah, it's Hampton, bro. That's, I that's, know, I know, I know. Bro. They've, got five, they've got let's, let's, five Chili's restaurants. And we're not even talking about Dodgers. We don't even have, they don't even have a cheddar. <laughs> so for those of y'all who don't know, we had Banks do a, a geo search of all of <laughs> like we're talking like the stuff that's just we're, about, we're not even talking about like stuff for us to be able to do like late at night. We're talking about just <laughs> restaurants that we all could just meet up at. We had Yo, Banks do a geo search. There's so many was, chilies, oh, man. Look, look, so look, many chilies, bro. Man, let me tell you something, Jay. Man, White. Chilies ain't bad. The like, day I talk about the AM and AM uh swag championship. Uh, yeah, I might end up calling. Well, that's gonna be, that show. would be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be fun though, man. All right, man. Listen, uh, thank you guys for checking out HBCU Nightly Live with Joshua Sims here. Please make sure you guys check out this Sunday HBCU Hoops Weekly with Herb Sewer the Third, Live for Hoops, as well as uh, Mail from HBCU Pass. Um, next Monday, make sure you guys check out the funnest, the best show that is around across the board, man. <laughs> HBCU Nightly Sponsored by Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> At least we got the slogan down. I'm sorry, that joint, that joint caught me. I'm sorry, bro. Bruh. That caught me from a different place. Uh, check out MD on Monday with Markham Banks and David Rhodes. Uh, 9 p.m. Best shows. It's 9 p.m. We we actually switched it to 9 p.m. So it'll be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Live here on HBC Nightly Network. And then as always, man, make sure you guys check us out here on Wednesday nights. Uh, myself, my sister Erica, BJ Jones will be back next week. Um, and everybody here, man, this is a, collab a collaborative show, man. Everybody that's here, our entire crew, man, I think it is incredibly fun that I get to do this show with some of my friends, um, people I have a tremendous level of respect and love and admiration for. And um, sometimes you guys, man, when you guys are watching the show, you might see us be on two different sides of the spectrum, man, but it's love there, man. We're just having conversations like we used to back in the day in the barbershop or, or used to do back in the day in the salon or just in the neighborhood around your family and this is why this show is authentically and, and and really um organically just a fun show man so thank you to everybody who watches this show thank you to everybody who comments in there some of y'all make some of the funnest comments in the world man right. um we'll man be, it, it's it's just hilarious man thank we'll be, you guys we'll be so struggling much. to hold them together looking at some of these comments man absolutely man once we get past march madness you guys know what's coming the first week of april First week of April, we go through conf we go through the game breakdown, the season breakdown for football. And I started the show off tonight to let everybody know, please leave your feelings at the door, man. Do not do this. But we are. You know, last year it was fun, man. It was fun. Tandia and 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 and, uh, and G as well. G was back there for a quick minute, then he left. Uh, but uh everybody, man, our entire crew, man, we, we appreciate you guys. But as as I said, Josh. Uh, first week of April. What's up, E? I don't even know if my school will have released our schedule by then. That's a fact. We're going. That's a fact, though. You but we don't even know who y'all playing. <laughs> we know who y'all. We gonna have to <laughs> guess. <laughs> we gonna have to guess. Not playing Hawaii. Two of, two of them games. We gonna have to guess. We don't yeah. know who y'all playing that week. We gonna have to guess. Man, listen, y'all need to have a discussion about how I was out here holding the whole me. Like this is how it's fault the me. I can't actually do things that conferences should be doing. Hey, yo, real quick. Do this same time every year. I don't know why there's so much pressure this year. Because hey, they're yo. trying to get the schedules out. Like, you yeah. had other folks had the schedules out in February, March, and you out here, January, the schedule was out. We know what yeah. I, we know what our cousins up in D.C. do, man. They do this every single year. I'm tired of it, man, but ain't yo, nothing we that can tells do you, That tells you they, they, they move the needle in their conference, man. They're like, you know, we, oh, it comes God. out when it comes out. AP, AP, come on next hey, week. Yeah, you know what's we'll up, see dude. You next week, come on, come on through. Next week. Go hey, ahead, hey, Herb, you had a quick update. Hey, yo, real quick, man. I know, you know, things slow down for basketball somewhat, you know, after the tournaments, but uh, HBC Hoops Weekly will be covering recruiting scenes and all sorts of stuff. So if you watch the show, if you are, you know, high school talent that is trying to get seen by HBC programs, hit us up. Hit us up on social media. Hit us up on the show. 
um, we're going to be covering a lot of that. So stay tuned to it. <laughs> you are crazy. Yo, no, 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 no. Pause. <laughs> Pause, bro. No, hey, no. That man can't defend, that man can't defend himself right now. Do not do this. Bro, I swear to bro, God. Don't God, do this, bro. Don't do this, bro. What is wrong with you, Jay? What is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> Why would you Why say? are you doing this? Bro. All right, bro. We, we, we got to close out this show. We got to go, man. We got to go. Gotta call call <laughs> this dude. Somebody got to call G, bro. Please, somebody call G. Somebody check on G, man. Somebody check on him. He, he is still furious. This is that what I mean. This kind of describes this kind of describes G's state. I hate y'all. I do anything. He's furious. <laughs> He's furious. <laughs> He's furious. I tell you, furious. Bro, this is nasty work, and I swear, <laughs> I am not laughing. I swear, bro. Oh boy, Jay White, bro, what is wrong with you, bro? It's the man. It's the man. Don't man. Don't just. Bro. just All right, y'all, man. For your family here at HBC Nightly Network, man. Uh, I'm your humble, gracious, phenomenal host, Joshua Sim Senior. As always, if you see us out and about, show us some love. We'll see you guys on Sunday for HBCU Hoops Weekly. Um, man, it's going to be an incredible week. Please make sure you guys are watching games and attend if you can um, from us here. Have a great night, and see you later. Yes, sir.